need any order? Is there any changes or adjustments, additions to the agenda? Is the uh, I've got uh, discussion uh, on a proposal on uh, Heather Rodriguez doing consulting for us on uh, recreation issues. Okay. Anything else? I just, okay. Do you have anything else? No. Uh, I'd like to just get updates on the Holcomb House uh, porch and uh, the lines room. No. Uh, the lines room. Oh, that's right. way to and any members want to provide the update on how it went with Colin? Mm -hmm. Yep. I also wanted to. Um, <clears throat> Have us decide on where the or continue the discussion on where the inclusivity sign is going to live, especially for the winter, and also talk about um, response time to emails sent to the select board. There's kind of been there's been some rumblings about that. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay, are we prepared to approve meeting minutes of July 15th, August 5th, and August 19th? So move, Mr. Chairman. The motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, see if I say no. Aye. Opposed? Rosemary, you got the floor. Second. In your packet, there should be the final budget status report for last year. And I have updated the 2009-2019 cash on mail. And the new figure is um, committed is $161. We have received some uh, state grants from on the highways that was for work that was done last year, so I included that. In this, um, to be received for last okay. year. And I had re the, um, we got a grant for the mill park for fixing the, the baseball fields. Mm -hmm. and that work has not been done yet, so I reserved that money up, and that was 4500 And that's already taken out. That's included, yep. That was the two major mm -hmm. items that I changed. So you guys come in with some recommendations on where to put the money? Brian wanted to put extra in the capital equipment fund. Yeah, uh, I think it is kind of as much as possible into the capital equipment fund. Um, and we can see about, I'd say, put 100 into the capital equipment fund and save the remainder for the uh, building maintenance fund. How is the building maintenance fund doing? It's pretty healthy right now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Even with the Holcomb House in this place? We're going to be, we're probably going to tap into it in some of this 1920 uh, financial year. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So it, putting a little bit back into it at the start of the year will uh, help cushion that. Yeah, we put $10,000 in last year from the reserve. Money. Okay. The gift it keeps on taking. So the recommendation is put a hundred thousand into the capital equipment fund with the remainder put into the building and grounds fund. That would be my recommendation. Is the board prepared to make a motion? I make that motion, motion Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Um, I'll second that. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, opposed. <laughs> Thank you. And current taxes to date, we've collected uh, almost 36%, which is about the same as last year. And, uh, 
and I handed up to you a list of different effects for your job. And I have received a letter of resignation from Michael Darwin as a Justice of the Peace. He has sold his house and moved to Florida. So I'm Governor Scotch. Um, we'll have to give him the notice that he appoints the new Justice of the Peace. He may ask the Republican <laughs> Committee for their, recommendations. Yeah, for, for nominations. Okay. So, so things to do. we don't take any action. It's just, just awareness. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And last week on Thursday and Friday, Jen and I attended the annual Preps and Treasures meeting. We had some very good um, seminars. One was on diversity and inclusion and how to run your work life so that the work life doesn't run you. And, and um, another one was really good was wage and hourly compliance and tax collections. Good. That's all you got. Mm -hmm. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Uh, Tom, you had a request on the liquor license. Uh, yes, for outside consumption. That was a good time. Okay, great. Um, so I have a map. Maybe I can bring it up for you guys. Sure. Um, uh, uh, over at the restaurant, uh, right next to the patio, there's a nice green area right there. What I did was I went through the area with my Department of Liquor Control Officer, Patrick Ross. And we walked the line together and decided there's a certain part of the grass that he felt safe and secure with us being allowed to put, have people have drinks in that area. And it goes from the porch, the deck, right to the fence where the storage units are, mm -hmm. and then over to the natural barrier. So it's all in perfect sight um, of the back of the bar. And what I've really found mostly, and I've got it, it's on this map, um, written in pencil, if you want to pass it around. Um, the pencil part is the part I'm proposing uh, to have that area. You want that map to go to the state too? Uh, if it could. Okay. Uh, but they've already, uh, the <coughs> control said it was okay, they liked what I was doing. I don't ask, like to ask for a lot, I just ask for a, a small area that I can control, keep safe. We have a light out there as well. But, I mean, mostly it's for daytime use. When we open up, um, for example, on Saturday afternoon, I had a bunch of families sitting on the deck and we had a bunch of kids running around outside the lawn. And it was really nice. So um, I guess it'd be nice if uh, one of the parents was able to go down there with their beer um, and everything's in visible sight of the restaurant. So, um, I was just asking for that expansion of the consumption. So there would be seating, is what you'd have tables and chairs and We have tables there. and chairs on the deck, and what uh -huh. I wanted to do on the grass was put a picnic table or two down there. And then mainly um, some outside games, some cornhole, some badminton rackers, some soccer ball, and stuff for the kids, really. Okay. Um, I can't see it getting much use at night, Although we do have a light for it, so it can be lit up. I thought about maybe a little bit of an outdoor fire pit before the winter, we can get into winter, which we only have about a month or so of that, before this area won't really be in any use at all. So the board could approve, approve with conditions or deny? Uh, motion to approve. With any conditions? Uh, he's already got our usual letter. I can't, if anyone can suggest some, I'll include it in the motion, but. Uh, okay. We, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. <laughs> any more discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? If not, Brian, you got the floor. There's a couple things on my report that I wanted to point out. You had asked me to spray the perimeter trail at Hill Park. That's done. And we to do it, we had to make a sprayer for that trail. It's a hundred bucks or so, but we have that. So in the future, 
future if you want us to do that. It's not a big deal. We can just go do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Wilson Road, the grant project, we started that. So that road is being closed every day from 6.30 to 2.30. Just so you're aware of that, if you're aware of it already. And then after we do that, we're going to start the grant project on Box Lot. So we'll have an excavator for a month. So we'll be doing, wrapping both those projects up while we have that excavator. Mm -hmm. I gave Eric a drawing of three areas where I shot grades. One was the Holcomb House. I was asked to see what needed to be done to get the water to drain away from the back of the house. It's going to take a little bit of work. Um, it would take us three guys, you know, a truck. We'd have to rent a little excavator and we could get it done in a day. But we wouldn't be able to do it until the next month if you guys choose to go that route. Because the problem is it's all running back to the building. So we need to, we got to regrade that whole area. And if you, if you, if you regrade that area and get it running away from the building at 2% until daylights when you come around the side of the building, you can get it to run out of there. You just need to remove some material. Mm -hmm. That's that back bank area behind the building? That, partially that, but then also where they're having trouble is on the west side, when you come up away from the back of the building, you have a set of stairs going up to the mm -hmm. upper apartment. That area right there, they're having trouble where the water's running in the building when it rains. And there's there's no place for the water to go, so it just comes next to the building and runs inside the building. The other the other two drawings, a while ago I was asked to see if there was anything to do about the water standing at the at the sidewalk ramp on Pearl Street, the west side of Pearl Street and 15, and then the west side of Railroad Street and 15. So I shot some grades. On Railroad Street, there's nothing we can do until it gets repaved. And then you're gonna have to pay, we'll have to pay attention and we'll have to mess with the curb reveal, but you can get the water to come out of there if you pay attention when we're paving and, mm -hmm. and we, we can make that work, but it's not, there's no fix for it unless you repave. The one on Pearl Street, it's possible to fix that issue most of it, not all of it, but a good chunk of it. What's holding that water back is there was a, a patch that was, it looks like maybe there was a crosswalk going across 15 at one time. I'm not sure what was there, but something was patched in there. And when they put that patch in there, they didn't make it flush with the existing grade. They put it up a little bit. That's causing a dam, causing the puddle at the bottom of that sidewalk. If you got rid of that, the pavement's actually you know, paved so the water would run away, but that patch is preventing it because it's building a dam. So if you could, you know, if I could find a little milling machine that could go on like a skid steer or something that would get over far enough, you could just mill a little trough in there mm -hmm. or you could cut it and re-patch it. But that's the issue on that one. That would be on the state highway portion? Mm -hmm. Yes, technically it would be. A little more difficult. Yeah, and it's a, it's only a four foot patch that's that's causing the, you know the trouble. What about the puddle that's maybe a hundred feet north on Pearl Street, where uh, Chris Parker's? Ooh. I didn't shoot any grades up there, so I'm not sure okay. what the issue is there. Okay. But if you would like, I could look at it at some point. Like that with that. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Another thing that I want to talk to you about, uh, Casey had went and staked out the basketball court that we've been talking about for a while. Mm -hmm. I will not have time to do anything probably this year, but it was just staked out. I haven't had a chance to go look at it and see what would actually cost us or the town time wise and material wise to do it but I will be looking into that and getting a number by next meeting.
think I could have another. So then, Casey, I think if you're looking to see if they want me to proceed. Uh, yeah, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever steps I can. It's, it's for putting in a, 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 a youth size basketball half court off the back, into the back meadow off the back stretch of the road. Mm -hmm. And realistically, I'm not going to have time this this year to do this it. Year. It would be a next year thing. I think that's that's all I have. So what's the board's thoughts on, I guess, one using the town's assets to uh, regrade over at the Holcomb House? We have one. Uh, Brian's already indicated he wouldn't be able to do the site work for the basketball until next year. Is that the only two things that you brought up? Yeah. Require action. So I guess first question is, do we want the town assets to do the work around the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. Of <laughs> if you have time, yeah, yes. definitely, for sure. Good. We don't want to build a rod anymore, it's already rod. <laughs> uh, quick clarifying question on that. So what about the tools that are required that aren't town assets? Or the rental of the, of the excavator primarily? It was like 300 bucks. Or... $400, including the globalization. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take it out of that fund that we just created. Yeah. Anything else, Brian? The um, oh. Basketball court. Did we need yeah. to talk about that, or you want to talk about that next year when it comes up? Well, we can do the cost. I'm, I'm understanding that the figuring it out can be done and gotten to you guys, yeah. and then Brian's the schedule is another reality. So I, I think we'd be looking for knowing if the town can do the site work. You know, this whenever that question, whenever the, that information can get to you guys, so we know that we can do it or not. When I was on the rep committee, I, I, I somewhere have a map that has a basketball court that was supposed to go in at Talc Mill that never went in. So I, I was telling Casey, if there's any chance that the rep committee might have money left in their budget to be able to kick towards getting that done, I think that's a great asset for the town. And it's worth looking into. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you're uh, financially. It's a, it's a, you're asking really. For uh, time from our from our highway crew, that's it, right? Right. Um, I'm hoping. Well, we have money for paving for this basketball area. You have money for paving, um, and I had sort of forgotten about the air, the, the, the notion, the uh, factor of the, quite a bit of fill would be needed. Uh -huh. So I've got a, doing a request for tomatoes who have helped us out in the past. Yeah, they're great. Stop yep. if they would help. With the cost of that, um, but it would, be, you know, it, it would be the time to strip the turf and grade and add fill. You know, there's a, there's a, there's time. Mm -hmm. and the specifics would come from Brian when he's got them. Right, and I'll be able to give you a better indication of that next month. We would there'd be a roller involved. We'd have to, you know, rent a roller for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I haven't seen it yet, so I need to. Get the time to go look at it. Yeah, so for next month, month, you could yeah. provide yeah. some numbers. Yeah. 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 I guess then there's a follow up question that maybe you could answer that is that if there was money a long time ago for. There's money every year. There's, well, yeah, but I, 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 don't, yeah. I don't know how procedurally how to, yeah. what to do with that information. Really? Money in the rec budget for a basketball. Recreation. Well, okay, yes. Um, what are, what's the question? I guess the question, if I'm understanding Kim correctly, there was okay. money to put a basketball court in the South Mill area, which was never put in. I don't know that there was money. There was planning and a map to do it. Okay. Then that's... And every year they got money, and every year they were trying to do another piece of that. So. They well, but they, they, they might want to, I, well, I think the question is, and I want to get off this quickly to move on to the, oh. back to your agenda. 
it's really a rec question of do you have plan to maybe put a half court or a court in someday? I think they're really two oh. different things. They're two different things. I mean, I think if you're asking, what you're not asking, you're not asking for money at this point for, no. at that, um, in terms of a basketball court at Talc Mill, yeah, I mean, I think, in my opinion, definitely we, there should be all sorts of improvements down there, um, including a basketball <laughs> half court, but I, there's not money for it right now and there's not an uh, immediate plan for it. Lisa's going to be able to push us in that direction, I'm sure. Good. <laughs> so you'll come back to us next month with some figures. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? I'm Seth. I don't know if Brian needs me here for anything. Uh, no, I don't think so. Anybody got any questions for Brian? Oh, yeah, I've got one. <laughs> This is really for everybody up there. What's with the water at Legion Field? I mean, there ain't no water at Legion Field. And I don't know whether you would be involved in that at all, Brian, or what, but. That's on me. That's on you. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that in a little while. All right. <laughs> then I'm through with you, Brian. <laughs> You're next. Who I am? No, not you. Uh, unless anybody's got any further questions for Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thank Free you. to go. You're welcome. I'll stick around for a short second. Okay. Uh, commission report. Kim, I guess you were Yeah, I'm not I'm sure if David had a report that he was giving. I, I can say that we've been working on class four roads, and we were given a list of class four roads that were um, up for possibly changing to a legal trail, which would help us with, my understanding, help the town with the new um, enforcements on erosion control. Um, and what I think we went through it with the, we don't know if it's even viable, but with the recommendation that the town would still maintain those roads that we turned into legal trails, that the, the town would still maintain up to the last driveway in some cases um, what they have in the past because our thought was these landowners bought this land with these th these premises and that to change that wasn't fair but um, as a resident i've come tonight just to say that i thought that a better way for the town to handle this would be to say all those who have class four roads we'd like you to create a committee and come together and it, the people who have come forward during our planning commission meetings actually created like policy, a policy set of policy statements that I'm um, assuming that David gave to you, Brian, and that um, you guys are going to look at to say, should we change these policies to what this person wants? But ideally, I would think coming together as a group of people who have class four roads and say, what do we want to see? And then bringing it to the board and saying, you know, having it do, doing it once instead of the planning commission saying, well, what do you think these landowners would want on their land? It's, I don't have a class four road, so I feel like we can gather information, but it would be much more to the point to have a group of people who are affected by it meet together. So, so when do you expect to have something to select for? The, I'm assuming that the information that the planning commission gets goes to Brian and that that goes to you guys. I don't know what David has or hasn't given you. Uh, so you guys are done with it? We have, we, I don't have a final report or anything from David. Okay. So what, what I'm saying is there's a premise there that needed to go through you guys to find out, can we even say that? Can we say that the town will still maintain um, class four roads that, it, it, that have gotten changed to legal trails? And that's, I, saw, I guess, something between you and David. I don't know how it works from there. I'm just saying, as a person on that commission, that I feel like a much more direct way would be, and in the future, as a, as a select board, if there's a, an issue, rather than handing it to a group of people who then have to hand it to another, you know what I mean? To get input, it seems like it would be really succinct to just say, class four owners come to the table, 
create yourselves a committee and and figure out what you you know would be able to do for the town to make this work. I don't know. Maybe I'm not speaking very well. That's certainly something you guys could have done at the planning commission level. To create a committee of, of you could have brought people in that. Well, people did come in, okay. but it just, I mean, okay, so that's that's good to know. The things that I'm seeing are inequalities and in people who have come forward are, are landowners who are at the end of class four road that they have to maintain themselves and then they look around town and see other class four roads that are maintained. So there's some inequalities and again, as, I select, as a planning commission member, I don't know how to deal with that. I don't believe that we maintain any class four. One way lane is a class four road, according to the map. No, that's class three. Lenway lane. Uh, part of Lenway lane there's, is class three, and part of it is class four. Right, there's a class four at the end of Lenway. Yeah, and we maintain up to the road. class three. Uh, up to the class four. Up to the class four. Class four. Yeah, thank you. Up to the class four. Some maps need to get. Anyway. Is there any other items for your report? No, that was it. That, that was part, partially report, partially as as. Resident. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Do you have any Thanks questions again. for Kim? Thank you. Howard, do you want to give any LCPC type of report? I don't have one. Okay. Good. We we haven't had a meeting. Well, we didn't have one in August, and I wasn't actually there for July either. So there you are. I don't know. Got nothing. I have to fire you. Are you the um? Mm -hmm. Vice Chair of that committee? You are. Okay, great. Okay. So should, it, how has it been in the past, just to check in, how does information get from the select, from the Planning Commission to the select board? Uh, it should be that Dave should either sent it to myself or to the whole board. And that hasn't happened in the last time? Not as regularly as we'd like. I'm planning on attending your next meeting. In fact, David hasn't been to one of our meetings through the summer. Well, that would have been good to know too yeah. as a vice chair because I didn't know that. Um, they are calling, just so you know, an emergency meeting tomorrow um, to try to deal with the policy issue. So that's, I believe that's tomorrow night. And I'm in New York, so I can't adjust. Why is that an emergency meeting? Um, because they wanted to finish this up and there was what we were handed was a two or three page policies page from one of the landowners, um, which I thought had some great ideas, but that people didn't feel comfortable in just voting on it at the point. They said they needed to read through it, oh, figure so out what they agreed with, didn't agree with, and then meet again. Gotcha. Thanks. And we couldn't meet remember at the regular time either. Yeah, there was some so conflict. So it's involved. like it's a work session meeting. It's not, not really an emergency. Well, it's an unscheduled. Unscheduled. What do you call that? Unscheduled or, yeah, work but session. not an emergency meeting. Okay. It's been it's special. 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 special meeting. It's a special, special meeting. It's a special meeting. meeting. That's perfect. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Don't Thanks. Emergency sounds a little Yeah. It does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Anything else? Anybody got any questions for Kim? Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for your input. Thank you. Uh, Jean from the library. <laughs> or... <coughs> oh, thanks for having us. Um, this is just a, a quick overview of just some of the, the things that have been going on. Um, just things are chugging away at the library. We're really excited. Um, we have a full um, committee of trustees, board of trustees. Um, we have regular. We have groups that are using the library. Um, we have the Conservation Commi uh, Commission, uh, the Johnson Tree Board, Johnson Recreation. There's a monthly reading group. Uh, there's a writing group that meets 10 times a year. We have homeschool groups, um, library programs, and then various other groups that are using the library. And so today, we just really want to just kind of give you an update because we, we don't see you that often. So um, we had a really busy summer. Um, this summer was busier than last summer. At the bottom, there's a table there. Uh, July saw 1,600 patron visits with an additional 393 youth visits for programs. Um, and so or, or we had um, uh, 
105 signed up for the summer reading program with 96 of our uh, local residents participating. So that's just, it's a busy place. Um, Jean and Kristen are doing a great job. Um, and that's really exciting. Um, we have just some of the projects that we've been doing. Um, last year we finished uh, the renovation of the children's area. So if you haven't been yeah. over, um, it's getting a lot of use. It's, you know, even some of the older kids like to climb up there and read a book. You know, it's really, you know, serving that area well. Um, as a board, we've been updating our job descriptions and policies. Um, some of them haven't been reviewed in probably 15 years. So we're kind of just going through and making sure things are still applicable. Um, we've been ongoing preparing for flood proofing, knowing that we are in a flood zone. Um, and right now we're in the process of um, moving the furnace to a ceiling mount furnace. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had bids on that, so we're, we're getting ready. And uh, we have three bids, so I believe we're good to proceed to choose one and, and move forward. Um, you can correct me if I'm incorrect on that. Um, we've had the, uh, just this last month, we've had the ramp. Um, just kind of shore up a little bit um and we're in the process of having a water heater replaced because that's kaput and um as well as there's some plumbing back up um over the winter we had ended up having cardigans come in and kind of clean out those pipes and it's backed up again and so it, there's two things that may be happening one is that we have older sinks down there and they're not really getting used and so it's creating a possible vacuum so we're going to you know, block off those, have a plumber to secure those. And then um, if that doesn't solve the problem, then we're going to have to look and see if there's some external, maybe somebody else on the line. Um, because the library really doesn't produce much waste. Um, it's just normal bathroom waste or one bathroom. And so there's something else going on. So we're trying to figure that out. Um, and then we've also, um, as far as flood proofing, we've reinforced the door downstairs as well as reinforcing some of the windows. So if we do have those flood waters rise, we're in a much better place. Um, as, and the, another project is we're creating a new library website that uh, one of our trustees is working on. So, so we've just had a lot of action um, and we're really excited about what's happening. So I thought we'd share. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Month of July, fourteen hundred visits. That seems like a lot. Um, you know how that compares to other uh, libraries our size? Or? Uh, it's hard to tell. We don't really share month by month yeah. statistics. We mostly share yearly statistics, so I can't say hmm. for sure. Very good. Mm -hmm. One day we had one hundred and ten people. Yeah, I noticed that. And that was a non-programmed day, so that was just people coming in and out of those office. The, the front side actually overviews some of the things that are offered at the library. So, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of opportunities for people to come and use it. So. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys are doing some good work. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. Mike, you got any questions? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to ask how the, the cleaning service is working. Great. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Howard, are you going to give a Tuesday Night Live? I am. Sure. Perfect. I'll be as brief as I can. So, needless to say, we had a great year this year. We, it was astonishing. Our low, lowest number, we, these are rough estimates because we don't have a, we never did do it on a flyover and find that to the actual head counts. But we had two rain day, two days with rain, two events with rain, partially. Um, we got them both in, at least partially, and we figured about 200 people at each of those. But our high number was nearly a thousand, uh, twice. Guess what? Three porta potties don't work at a thousand people. So next year we're gonna get. Well, we think we need at least four. We'd be more comfortable with five, and that's only to capture those events that you know we. We could probably guess which ones they are in terms of will be once we have the once we have the lineup, but you can't be sure. It seems that um, even the ones that were low numbers were bigger than they've been in the past. Mm -hmm. um, typically on a rainy day in the 
years past, we might have 100 people instead of 200 mm -hmm. this year. So um, we've done really, really well with that. Um, we, we got a good start on our zero waste uh, fiber-based clamshells and compost and all that stuff. And that will be even tighter next year uh, to try and reduce trash and all like that. I had just spent the phone, uh, I spent part of the morning today on the phone with Tom of Black Soil Compost over at Hardwick. And he's got all kinds of like he's he's pushing this for of course in uh, um, a lot of the festivals and things like that around in the area, and he's got some great ideas which I'll run by our committee when we next meet and uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we uh, plan to produce mission statement, uh, you know, clear a, a clear mission statement for Tuesday Night Live and and a set of policies uh, over the winter. So at some point I'll be back to you with that stuff. Probably pass it through Brian, who will, you know, give it a proof look and then pass it on to you guys and we'll see how you all feel about it. Um, we have instituted levels of sponsorship, not just not just uh, you know, the one price fits all. And we're we're struggling a little bit with just how we increase. For someone at the $500 level instead of the $250 level, all we've got at our disposal right now is mentioning it at every opportunity. So that's three, three times uh, through, the, through the night of, the, of every night. That's 24 mentions then all together for the season. Um, uh, calling, calling out that, that particular. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but it looks like um, we have at least three people interested in doing it again next year at the higher level. And we haven't even offered it really yet, so that was that was uh, good. Uh, we are starting to invest uh, with uh, Tim Mikovich, uh, who did the sound for us um, from up at the college. He's um, he's got a, a, a general plan in terms of uh, uh, upgrading their gear. Um, all we really have to offer ourselves right now are speakers. Um, uh, uh, the board and stuff like that that we've got are not working um, and probably it's not worth fooling with them. So we went and bought ourselves a new control board this year for about 2500 bucks, which we were able to take out of uh, out of our own expenses. Uh, I mean, our own accounts. <clears throat> and it worked great. And it was used for uh, uh, the last six, I think, concerts and visits. Uh, but there's a lot of auxiliary equipment that has to go with that. Right now we're using, uh, all that stuff comes with Tim, who has a sound, a sound reinforcement business of his own. So we're, uh, like with Bill, he's got all this, he's got everything we need, and so he'll just, he just keeps loaning it to us until we, until we finally, you know, it'll probably take four or five years to get up to the point where, where we can be on our own in terms of gear. But that's great. Once it's bought, it has no further costs. Mm -hmm. Um, um, so, uh, passing the hat this year uh, had a staggering consequence. We got $1,763 in, in single dollar bills generally, um, uh, as, you know, in, in, an effort, in that effort. And we didn't do all the concerts either. I think we did six or five. So, and it's, it all goes straight into the kitty, and that will probably be, end up um, um, being used for sound gear stuff and all like that. Um, our end of year balance, by the way, is at this point is thirty one sixty three, which is great. That's 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 what we need to get to, to see next year. So we're in we're in really solid financial shape, and we have of course not sold any sponsorships yet or any of that stuff. So we're 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 thinking we're in good shape. Um, the committee membership, I know at least one person who doesn't want to keep, uh, stay on the committee. I love my committee. I love them. They are wonderful. They're hard workers. When somebody drops something, there are two people there to pick it up and run with it. It's, Jesus, if I had a football team like these guys. <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, they're, they're, I think at least five of them are going to stay on. I don't know what the other two, but we'll see. Well, I'll be back to you once we have the letters of resignation and then we you know, have found some of the different places for your um, blessing. Um, we're going
going to change the, the, fen, the vendor fee structure, uh, which is now at this point, I think it's 175 bucks is all we're charging for the whole series of a vendor, and that is dirt cheap compared to what all the other concert series are doing. So, and the vendors, of course, are standing in line. And, you know, wow, that, that sounds like a great deal. Well, it's not going to stay that great for them, but it'll, <laughs> but still. But, uh, oh, and we found, we, we asked all of them uh, to not use any styrofoam. And apart from the very first performance, they all stopped. And they went to fiber-based clamshell, which is great, because that stuff we can compost. And we're still twiddling with the, how we collect trash and separate it from compost and all like that, uh, recycled stuff. And we'll get better at it next year. But this year was sort of a heading, but we'll, we'll, it'll, it'll improve. Um, so that's, we're headed towards zero waste if we can do that. Uh, we're going to partner next year with the, uh, the Lamoille Waste District and with um, uh, the, uh, the Black Dirt Compost guy. So uh, I think we're going to be in good shape. We're going to have, they're going to, there's going to be a bin that Black Dirt provides. And uh, all the compost will go in that, clamshells, the whole works. So hopefully we'll be able to take trash out and just two little bags instead of eight big ones every week. Um, bike racks. A lot of people bike to these performances. And I'm talking about driving uh, down the rail trails in both directions. Um, at one point, we had about 45 bikes lying around up, up by Stoop Squeezer. Um, it would be nice if we had some bike racks. You got some we can borrow? Or a um, big corral. They make corrals now for bikes, so you can check in your bike and you don't have to lock it up. So there's one person watching them, and like last night at Grease Potter, they had probably 100 bikes. Meaning just stays in a row? Um, they had soft horses boards and the front wheels were going over the, the board that went across from the two slot horses. Oh. That might be I'll look into that. that That's got to be easier than moving around bike racks. Yep. Well, I don't know that REC has extra bike. I'm sure we don't have extra bike racks kicking around, but we should be participating and helping out with uh, getting... It could be a fun, it could be fun, a fun Boy Scout or some yeah. group yeah. that wants to do a service project and then they, they watch the bikes. And yeah. Who's running Boy Scouts? <laughs> Seriously, who is? Denise Sargent? Oh. No, Denise is done. So oh, Denise Ken Stearns. Ken Stearns? Oh, okay. All right. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Boy, the Stearns have been involved with work <coughs> since I've been in town. Okay. All right. All right, let's talk later. Um, uh, but I'm by for this. Uh, right, and we've covered the... Uh, Four to five for uh, porta potties. Water. Everybody wants water on that field. We don't need much, but we got to have water on that field. The vendors need it to be able to have a, a, fill a kettle, and um, and it, it's yeah, anyway. Please. I thought that was all. Right. So did I. No, uh, there's a standing question about how we'll deal with uh, gray water. Wastewater. What great water? It's nothing. Yeah. Okay. All oh, they want is bottled water. Yes. They're not going to make any messes in it, right? No. No. We haven't been able. That's our claim is that we're not really going to have wastewater. That hasn't really satisfied. Well, who's been giving us the trouble? Uh, the state. Get out of here, really? For one day a week? Um. And in which departments? I mean, what, what agency? Uh, and are the water control. Mm. Why do you even know about it? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> it's too uh, late now, I guess. <laughs> what, <laughs> what are you the That's as bad as the hot dog deal for crying out loud. For crying out loud, the seniors couldn't even sell hot dogs for a while. Um, well, by my lights, you've got eight months to figure this out. Yep. Ten, actually. Well, I'll get with you briefly. We'll talk about water usage, how many gallons we're talking about, and hopefully 
with you as Tuesday Night Live coordinator, <coughs> I can point to somebody else saying that we're not generating wastewater and that it's help yourself. Bad. I'll go down there and sit on their doorstep. To call. Their concern is that we don't have any catchment or anything for the water. Would it help? Our point is that we're well? not making wastewater, so we don't need a catchment for it. But it, or did somebody just bring a tank or something? Didn't wait a minute. Now there's a corrugated. That's for the meter horn. Gizmo out there. What? That's for the meter horn. I thought it was full of uh, full of stone, and then. Uh, that probably is mostly full of stone, but it, it's uh, that's where we'll attach the meter horn so that we can remove it in the winter because it's not insulated, so the pipe would freeze over winter. So we, that's where we attach the meter horn and remove the meter horn and drain the line uh, so that it doesn't freeze open. Right. So that's our access point for it. Okay. Well, I don't want to take, let's not take up the board's time on this, but if you're stalling tired. with moving this forward, just keep the board in the loop and yeah. we can all start screaming. And we'll... Yeah, I I tell you, uh, you know, if this goes to the front <coughs> line, you're going to find the peasants with pitchforks and torches on your doorsteps. <laughs> I will arrange it. <laughs> it is a promise. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm done. All the vendors playing good now in the same box? Yes, yes. Yes, after, uh, after uh, performance number two, with two vendors going at it hard, um, I pulled them apart. And one of them bitched him on, but he's down the, that end, and the other one's down at this end. And, you know, and so they all made nice, even though they, every time I walk by, I get dirty looks. Like it's okay. Good. Um, and... Uh, what else? Yeah, we really didn't have any Donnie Brooks really apart from that. Mm -hmm. It's great. Good. People are happy. And every Wednesday morning, I would come. Uh, I would get down there before uh, the, the rest of the world was up, and I'd police the field and generally pick up, you know, soda straws and all, just little bits of things here and there. Not much left. Yeah. Not much it's left. Pretty pretty clean at the end of the night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you guys did a great job pulling it all together. Thank you. It was great. Very last fun. minute. It's been it's been a lot of work, but it's also been a good deal of fun. So, and I'm really, really lucky that the committee was willing and nice and intelligent people. Well, next year you can do the fun all over again. Yeah. Equipment storage is here. Yeah. Well, our gear right now is in there. <coughs> Pardon me. There are. We do have some uh, defunct bits that uh, that take up a lot of room in there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, but I, I really want to get rid of that stuff and maybe turn it into cash if I can. But mm -hmm. That won't happen until it didn't matter probably when I got some time. Howard, you and your crew didn't do a good job. You did an outstanding uh, job. Uh, thank and, you. Uh, I tell you, every night I was there, everybody was raving about it. And, uh, I said, well, it's Howard and his crew. You know? Like Eric just said, you stepped up to the plate at the 11th hour. And, and took something that was starting to sink and brought it back to the surface. Well, that's nice to hear. Thanks. And, you know, and everything I do, I do for Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's weird. <laughs> <fear. laughs> Why library... are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> the library needs bike rack, too. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, okay. I think rec should, yeah, we should work with both groups and get. Uh, How's this? I imagine the skate park has uh, bike racks, but. Um, yeah, we do. We do. I have a couple of things. Um, yes, outstanding job. Thank you. Thank you. Two things. Um, one has, it was so great to see the MVU students involved with the sound mm -hmm. and Tim leading that way. I was wondering if he's thinking at all about making that maybe for credit for credit he's doing he's he's dealing with that in his own way uh okay <coughs> to figure out the longevity of them participating and making it a you know right uh mutual I, I, I think what he's doing is actually paying them out of out of the dividend account mm -hmm. um and and of course writing <coughs> uh mind bending recommendation letters from the time Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, th those kids um, come down here willingly. Um, 
we're actually thinking of providing each of them with uh, uh, dinner um, you know, dinner vouchers mm -hmm. uh, out of our petty cash. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see how that goes. I'm okay, that was just one thing I thought about. Yeah, those those kids are being taken care of. Okay. You know. That's good. I would just would love the relationship to continue well into the also, future. But my thought if it was maybe a for an accredited class or, or some kind of yeah, elective. Uh, as far as I know, I think it's a straight cash transaction for those guys. But Okay. Uh, yeah, he and I talked about it at one point, but I forget exactly how it transpired other than that. Okay. Credits would make it more sustainable. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking about. The other thing is um, smoking at this event. I felt for a thousand people being there, it wasn't hor horrible. Um, but yeah. I personally would love for this to be a smoke-free event. Um, so I didn't. I see yeah. Jessica and I see you. I don't know. I'm just uh, wondering if if talks with um, healthy, you know, Memorial Valley is. Uh, I don't see happen. why we can't at least. Uh, sign it that way and publicize it that way and see what happens. I'm not sure that I'm yeah. probably willing to add this to the exhibit as yeah, so someone from the uh, yeah, police department. But I mean, no, uh, but uh, just a yeah. honor system of sorts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're going to have one, this we are going to do, we're going to we're going to have one station under a tent with lights that will be all uh, recycling, compost, and trash. One. And it'll probably be over by Lois's operation, you know, the, uh, that corner uh, where the pies are. Uh, at least that end of the field, because that's where most of the people come and go from the, from the event. Um, and, um, and so we're, what I think we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna build a table with uh, compost on one side and trash on another. And, and anyway, uh, and we'll have somebody there, probably a paid somebody there, to say, "Put your stuff right here on this table, and I will sort it." Because that's the only way we're going to get people to, mm -hmm. you know, they want to leave. They, they ran out of beer. They want the cat needs to be walked. I don't know. They're they're on their way out, and the last thing you know they want to do is. Yeah. Figure out which what, what this goes where, so we're just gonna have to stack it right there, which we'll you know, zip it into uh, the proper containers. And uh, the waste district is delighted to hear that, and um, Black Dirt is delighted to hear that. So yeah, everybody's gonna be happy, and we'll have much less trash. Uh, yeah, uh, and I guess I'm still that the, the the two big concerts. Uh, the three porta potties were so bad that you know we, we damn near had to paddle on them. Uh, you know before the before the night was over because they were starting to overflow and stink. Mm -hmm. So it really is a serious issue when we have to deal with it. Just think of waste products. There it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Any well, further questions? No. Thank you, Howard. <laughs> okay, Brian, I guess we can get into your report. Crack a window, is that okay? Mm -hmm. So, our first item. Uh, Fast has asked for a specific exemption from our ATV policy. Uh, specifically, that. Uh, the requirement that all ATVs must register and with VAS Secretary of VAS and Place somewhere, or at all times on town roads. Uh, they would like to be exempt from this uh, because a lot of the ATVs that they're using for this are volunteers who normally use the, their vehicles and ATVs on private land and don't typically use the trail system. So this would be an added expense for members who are already doing work for VAST on a volunteer basis. Board thoughts? Right, Pretty much. <laughs> I so they, or or VAST can buy a, a TMA. Yeah. And they can, they have to be VAST in order to ride our trails, seeing some of their joint trails. 
other. You're going to make a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we exempt VAS uh, from our ATV policy, specifically the requirement to register with VASA and carry the VASA plate during your trail maintenance. The motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion second. Any more discussion? Can you can you put directly Sterling Snow Riders? Because we're the only ones that are going to be maintaining the trail system inside of the town of Johnson. I'll Eric, change that. I'll change that to Sterling. Friendly amendment. Is that a friendly amendment to the second year? Yeah, I just uh, Donnie, do you, are you clear on how that's worded? Yep. Good. Any other discussion? Yeah. All those in favor, sing for saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Application. Okay. Uh, the next, you've got a copy of the call for application for the Robert Wood Johnson Culture of Health Crimes. Um, this is something we've talked about chiefly with the town and village uh, members of Dennis Promise and uh, representatives from Community Health Services of Moyle Valley. Um, we think that the work that's been going on in our community makes us eligible for this prize. Uh, the prize itself is, is great, but it also, the recognition is really important and it's also kind of opening up a relationship with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and our work it is chiefly important. Um, one of the requirements here is that it's a community prize. So it's a, a, a municipal entity has to be the applying body, but it has to, the application has to be driven by a coalition. Uh, and we've got volunteers uh, from Dennis Promise, Chesla, uh, what's Daniel's organization? Recovery. North Central Recovery Center. Uh, so we, we have a coalition of people who want to help out with this, but the, the town will have to be the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we think that the work that we've done with, you know, we've got Dennis Promise, we've got uh, work on the health center at the school, we've got work we're doing with Health of the Loyal Valley, we've got the work that we're doing uh, bringing in a, a new recreation coordinator and increased physical activity and, and really trying to expand that out to more of the community. Uh, we've got the town's participation in uh, trying to develop the healthcare facility on the Janet Promise property, uh, the related work that the uh, Tatras are doing with the uh, the Barrows building and, and the, the cafe and job training and everything. That, there's a lot of related work that a wide variety of the community has participated in for this. Uh, so we think we have a very competitive application. What's the prize? Sorry. Uh, the prize is $25,000 in cash. Uh, and it we're gonna to have to do a little bit more research on how we're, we're allowed to spend the money. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not a grant, so this is not paying back work we've already done. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an additional $25,000. If it's going through the town, we might be limited. If the town is the awardee, and it's not awarded to the whole coalition, then we would only be able to spend that on town activities, uh, which we might be able to do with, you know, support for, um, you know, uh, doing road repairs on St. John Street or, or something like that. Things signage. That, signage. Signage. Like, there's a lot of related work that is town business that mm -hmm. might be hard to get the money together if it wasn't for this price. Or it, the prize might be to the coalition, uh, in which case the coalition would have to decide on how it's going to spend the money. And that I'm just not familiar enough with the details of the process on 
how the money is awarded if we were to win. Uh, the initial application is coming up pretty soon. It's in November. Um, and that entered. If we pass that, there's several more rounds of activity. Uh, there's site visits. Once we get narrowed down, uh, there are there'll be uh, ten awardees in, in the end, up to ten awardees. Has Jenna's Promise become a uh, tax exempt public charity? Well, it's been filed. It's okay. Good. I can't imagine. It wouldn't be right. We have, a, we have an ID number, federal ID number. Because there is a paragraph here that states each applicant community will re be required to designate a local U.S. governmental entity or tax exempt public charity operating in its community to accept the 25000 cash prize on the community's behalf should they win. Community partners can decide together how to use the funds to benefit the community. Doesn't sound like any strings. Budget reports on price expenditures are not required. So, yeah. And for fundraising efforts for Jenna's Promise and Ted's Love and everything, it'll be they got quite a feather in their cap to see that they were awarded a national competitive prize for what they've done so far. Uh, so this will. And it's a short runway. Applica application is going to be in by November 4th and yeah. announcing November 12th. Announcing the first round. Uh, then there are several more right. rounds where they narrow it down further. Okay. What's well, the board's pleasure? That's a great idea to me. Mm -hmm. Are you so moving? Yeah. So, so what is the motion exactly? It just sounds like a great idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think his motion might have been to uh, go ahead with the application to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. That's exactly what I was going to do. I second that. The motion is second. Any more discussion? Brian, how much time is it going to take a ton of time for you? I'm, I've gotten okay. pretty good offers of help. Okay. Um, the time required is the concern that this is not a convenient time for a lengthy application process. For you? Right. Uh -huh. um, I think with the help that I've been offered from Dennis Promise and uh, Chesla and Daniel at uh, Recovery Vermont, uh, I think I've got a good team of people to help me out with okay. it. So Great. I'm confident that we can get it together. Okay. So they'll be the excuse that 90%. I hope so. Okay. Anything else? If not, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Replacing the locks. Forward, we want to replace the locks on the recreation part of the lower storage building uh, with the uh, it's a kind of lock and uh, mechanism that you see on a lot of Airbnb kind of things. It, it's Got a combination that we could reset on it. Um, we think this will be help us control access a little bit better, uh, be cheaper than a key card system, and since we can reset it, it again it helps with that control. Uh, so we're interested. Uh, Lisa has asked the village if they were okay with it. Uh, the village was okay with it. They might also ask us to replace the lock. Actually, I don't think there is a lock between the storage facility and the uh, rec storage facility. I don't think so, no. I don't remember if there's no lock or if it locks from the rec side of the door. No. You open the door and the alarm sounds, so it's a pretty significant it, disadvantage, disincentive yeah. uh, to... It's, yeah. a, it's alarmed, but it's not locked. Yeah, it should, should be just a standard lock in there. Yeah, we just throw a dead bolt on and it'll be fine. Yeah. Do you need a motion for this or just... Yeah. I, I would accept a motion, but I think it's mostly... Awareness? Just awareness. Start. Yeah. Okay. Unless anybody Sounds has like any issues with it. No, it's going to help a lot for... Yeah. Um, for rec. Okay. Okay. 
racial justice. So I've been in touch with a few different options for the racial justice workshop. As you recall, uh, the uh, Racial Justice Center, or the Peace and Justice Center, uh, sent uh, a final bid of fifteen hundred, which was a little bit higher than we had anticipated uh, early on in the process. Um, I've since talked to a couple other groups. Uh, one recommended by uh, uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns, uh, and that had, had pretty good representation. They were around uh, two to three thousand uh, dollars. We spoke to Greg Stefanski. He had a group that he recommended that came in two to five thousand uh, dollars. Those both sounded really good. I also spoke recently to uh, our local resident, Offy, and Offy thinks that he has a training that could be appropriate for us, and he would, he's looking for a lot less. Uh, we didn't have a specific dollar amount budget, and they were less than a thousand, a few hundred dollars. So those other two were more yeah. expensive. Were how much? Two, uh, or three? two to three thousand and three, uh, two to three thousand and two to five thousand. For two hour? Uh, they, they would, for the others, it, it, we didn't get as far into planning what the workshop would be. So their prices are a little more valuable because we had, or a little more variable because we'd have to do a lot more detail with them about what exactly we want. Uh, Peace and Justice Center has a, you know, this is their level one uh, identifying bias. Uh, I think what they name the training, but they've got a, a training that they do that they think is a good fit for us that they're ready to roll out. So they know how much they would charge. They know exactly what they would do for us. We also had lengthier conversations with them because they, we just started with them earlier uh, based on recommendations. Uh, the others, we haven't gotten very detailed with exactly what we want to see, so their prices range a little bit. Um, the folks that uh, state, uh, Greg Stefanski recommended was uh, Keisha Brown and Sue McCormick. Uh, Keisha Brown was also involved in uh, the economic opportunity zones, and she's given a talk here in Johnson about economic opportunity zones before. Uh, and she's also a personal friend, uh, so she'll be aware of that. But we're talking about bringing her in. Uh, I don't want to McCormick. The other folks, it was Curtis. I apologize, I'm going to bring it. Curtis Reed at Vermont Partnership for Fairness and Diversity uh, was recommended by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Vermont what? Partnership in? Vermont Partnership for Fairness and Diversity. And they were the two to five thousand? Uh, they were the two to three. Two to three? But obvious several hundred, right? Yes. Why is this so expensive? I don't understand. For a couple hours. Well, I know in the case of the Peace and Justice Center, when I did a workshop that they held at um, the library in Jeffersonville, there was like three or four staff that came to do this. Um, because they have different are specialties. To, What's that? Are they paying these people? Of course, yeah, of course. No, this is their profession. Um, you know, there was, we did things in a big group, we broke up into smaller groups, you know, there's a lot of movement <laughs> to the workshop that required um, more guidance and staff. Hmm. 
and Afi, you don't know what his number is. Uh, Afi is a little bit like the others that he talked about. If, that for him it would probably be a few hundred dollars, but we haven't worked out a complete program of exactly what it's going to look like with it. Just like the others are a little bit variable, uh, his is also. But he indicated that you know, he was thinking a few hundred dollars less, less than a thousand. I'm not familiar uh, with office credentials or what, in terms of, I mean, the, the other groups have uh, some, uh, you know, Kisha Ram, Center for uh, Fairness and Diversity, Peace and Justice Center. And, well, they've got uh, clearly groups behind them that uh, give them the experience needed to do this sort of thing. So what, where does Afi fall in that sort of experience and expertise? Afi does have, let's see, he works as part of the Transcultural Awareness Institute. Did you find his website? No. I mean, I'm, I haven't looked yet. Looking up Transcultural Awareness Institute. <coughs> he certainly yeah. has quite a background as far as the civil rights movement. He's uh, 81 years old or something like that, right? And he's been basically the, from the ground floor of the American Civil Rights Movement. So I think he's more than qualified to do some types of training. But where he might have some credibility is he lives in this community. Excuse me? He lives in this community. Yeah. And you know, people might relate to him because uh, he could share his own experiences or whatever, and people know him, and and uh, a lot of people know him in the community. I guess I wonder again how much experience he has with large groups and doing effective training for large groups. I mean, that's you know pretty key to success. <clears throat> At this point, I don't have any testimonials for for him, but he, he he does say that this is something he does and, and something he's familiar with. Okay. Yes, I haven't heard of any of his. I haven't seen any. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any testimonials. Or okay. Yeah. Or, uh, I think there's plenty of testimonials on his website. There's plenty of plenty stuff there. Uh, let's see. The, the uh, devil's advocate for this little bit is it's also worth to think about, like, is it, do we want somebody is it valuable for us to have somebody from in town who can relate to their experiences, or is it valuable for us to have somebody from outside the town because there's they're not from? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. A little more objective. Well, I think you all know my opinion. I am 
A lot of it is based on having done a training with Peace and Justice. It was incredible. It's life changing. It's top notch. It's in my mind worth every penny. I think this community really needs it. I think there's a lot of people that really want it. Um, and you know, when we were <clears throat> voting on the inclusivity statement, a lot of people, even on this board, were saying, you know, well, they're just words. They're not action. And what is, you know, how is this going to have any impact? And I really feel like this is, you know, step one in the action piece um, that there seemed to be seem to be a uh, desire for. Um, I have some questions, and, and it's all about the inclusivity and who's who and what's what. Um, there's an extreme drive for the inclusivity and the racial justice and all that. But my problem is, is we have a select word, I'm looking at you all, and you, trashed businesses yourself on your Facebook page, which is exactly why I stepped down from my treasurer's position at Johnson Works after 10 years. So can you explain to me, did you think about the 25 employees at Johnson Roller Mills who may have the exact same opinions that you do? You drag them into this. They are taxpayers here too and they have to work and they have to live. How is that inclusive? Okay, I'm having a very difficult Are we time talking about this? with- um, It's a little off topic from where we're, we're at currently. I'll, I'll give Carl an opportunity to respond if she wants, but it's really where, not- Then where is the appropriate spot to address that? We can add you at some point, uh, member of the public, for comments. Tonight or another time? You're choosing. You choose your board. Well, we can put you in after uh, after this line item, if, no. if you want. Okay. If it's sort of pertinent. But I, I did make an offer to you if you want to respond. Um, but I'm afraid if you guys I, start into a back and forth. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable talking about this in this form because it's, uh, I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit attacked about something on my personal Facebook page, which has nothing to do with me being on this board. This feels personal and not that I'd be more than happy to talk about in a different you said you want to raise my taxes and you guys pitch that we need to bring business to Johnson. So I think that it's more than just personal Facebook page. You represent the community that I run a business in. That's what you guys do is represent the community that I run a business in. I will never do that. Never on any personal Facebook page town Facebook page, none of that. Okay, I'm gonna bring it back to the line item of the workshop and um, you know, you're more than welcome to provide your comments at the appropriate time, but. Perfect. So back to the workshop discussion. Um, Sure, where we were going with that, but uh, I think Kyle made a proposal for the. She was advocating for the peace and justice. Um, we ought to wait till Lafayette gets back with something more firm and what he's going to do for us for what he's going to charge us. That's fine. Would you like me to pursue details with everybody or. Uh, it, it's. That's kind of why we have unformed uh, workshop ideas from the other folks that I don't want to spend a lot of their time planning out a workshop that we don't intend on giving them. So I'm happy to work with Offie or any others with your instruction, but I don't want to take a bunch of time with anybody that we just don't have any intention of hiring. Right. But we have more information from some of the other people than we do from 
often, right? We do. So then maybe we should get a little more information from Avi and then it'll be easier to decide. Okay. That's my own feeling. What's the board's thoughts? I'm yeah. quiet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still digesting been, all that. Uh, I've been at a broadband so. meeting for two hours. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, I, I would. Uh, I don't think you should defer to me. You've had the discussion. You know. I think you actually you walked in on the beginning of it. Oh, did I? Yep. This is all you know. Yep. This is all we know. Do you hear the four options that are on the table? I don't. I I only understood off the and the piece of Okay. Yeah. And there was two others. Uh, two others. It's there's no organization to it, but it's Keisha Brown and Sue McCormick, uh, which were recommended by Greg's defense. Greg's defense. Mm -hmm. And then there's Curtis Reed at why I always keep forgetting it's Vermont. Partnership for Fairness and Diversity. And the other one that's uh, Curtis Reed, they were recommended by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And they've done trainings for, for the league in a couple of different capacities. And the prices on those were? Uh, two to five thousand for Bishop Robinson McCormick and two to three thousand for. Uh, and the Partnership for Fairness University. And these are one session sessions or? Uh, that's where some of the very pricing variability gets in is that they're probably one session, um, but they're you know, a couple hours open workshop. Uh, yeah. yeah. So my sense is um, uh, Peace and Justice Center has um, something that's out of the box that they move from community to community. They do this over and over again. They've got people, including Kyle, who uh, been to one of these and, and vouch for it. It's less expensive than, uh, you know, I can't imagine spending up to $5,000 as much as I respect those speakers. So that's, that's the way that I would... Uh, Tilt. That's my impression from talking to them is that the Peace and Justice Center has a training plan that they can use for us. Uh, these others would have experience in this kind of thing, but they would make something a little more custom to, to us. Uh, I had a pretty lengthy conversation with uh, Curtis Reed at the uh, Partnership for Fairness and Diversity. And that was I thought he had a really interesting uh, opinion and take on why this was important and how this could uh, benefit our community. Mm -hmm. I could not support the Peace and Justice uh, Center. I've read their website. Uh, they uh, advocate uh, wealth distribution. Uh, they want to abolish ICE. And uh, I would not feel comfortable with uh, spending taxpayer money on Johnson, and especially my own, to a group that uh, is kind of at a sink in my beliefs. So I would not support the Peace and Justice uh, Center in Vermont. I think ICE is very important for the security of our country, and I think that it'd be anarchy if it was dissolved. Well, I have my own reservations about the peace and justice. I, after we got the, the price quote, I went on their website. And I, I just, I felt like they were an extreme group. Um, yeah, it seemed like they were protesting everything under the sun. And I just, I didn't feel comfortable with them. And I thought their price was extravagant, but it sounds like uh, 
that's a going rate. Who is the, your conclusion, Matt? What, I didn't hear it. Um, My conclusion is that I was favoring Peace, the Peace and Justice Center. That's a out of the box, off the shelf, I should say, off the shelf workshop. That, I think the job of these people is not to make us feel comfortable um, when they come here. Um, whoever it is, you know, I suspect that they're going to be using a crowbar to move me from where I live my comfortable life. Um, so I'm not so worried about, I think I can accept and reject and have some pretty strong opinions um, in areas where I might disagree with peace and justice, but I suspect they do a good program. But the question leading up to this was, do we defer for coffee to develop? And you were saying you thought we should? I think we should. He's more than qualified to give us our training. And he's local for crying out loud. It's cheaper. Um, so in past meetings and in conversations with Brian, we we aimed for having this happen in September. And so we're here we are mid-September. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I would love to get this moving. So what's more thoughts here? Do we want to give Afi an opportunity to present something, a package on what he would provide, what his cost would be? Or do you want to submit a, have a motion to uh, go with peace and justice? See what Afi has to say. Can I? I move that we, can I make a motion? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I move that we um, hire Peace and Justice to do a um, racial justice workshop for the town of Johnson. Okay, we got a motion. Do we have a second? Well, I have a question. You call them a, an extreme group. Um, is that uh, shadier or would you participate in it differently? Uh, that you would, a different group that you didn't, that you had a different impression of. My sense is, my concern is that if we just have this workshop, we don't have full buy-in from the board, um, that it's not, uh, might not have the intended. I would not participate personally. I mean, I respect well, whatever the board's decision is, but I personally would not participate if it was peace and justice. We have a second. No, I mean, I, I, I think that whoever we go is we need full participation from the board. So if that's if that's your stance, and I would not uh, second that. I'm still looking for a second. Lacking a second, the motion will die. Yes, I'm in the same position in that. I would favor them, but I think that we all need to have the same experience even if we view it differently afterwards. Um, okay, I'm sensing there's not gonna be a second. If the motion dies, then I will put before the board the question of do we want Offie to, at least Brian, explore with Offie what his proposal might look like. I would say Poffy and the um, the other groups, Vermont at least, yeah, and the other groups. Proposal on the table. That's fine. Everybody consent. Mm -hmm. Okay, go forward. Poffy, right. I'll give you an opportunity. So Kyle, I am not attacking you. Okay, I'm, I'm like, I just feel like there's a lot of driving 
for all for good reasons. But it, I'm trying to figure out who's supposed to be where. Like, hashtag boycott Johnson Woolen Mills. Rotten to the core. When's it going to be Tangles? When's it going to be Jonas Promise? When's it going to be Moog's Place? Like, I don't, we're all supposed to be here together trying to make this community work. And that really, really, really upset you or upset me. I don't hate anybody. I don't, I don't despise you. I'm trying to figure out if it's only one group of people that you want in your little clique and the rest of us have to leave, or are we all going to make this community work together? Because I was so offended when that happened. And I was getting text messages from other business owners while I was still in bed. And I got out of bed and I resigned immediately because I cannot, I'm not gonna be a part of that. I'm not. I couldn't ever put things of that nature out on my Facebook page, whether it's Tangle's page or my own page, because I would have myself right out of business. I keep my thoughts, especially when it comes to things of that nature, to myself. And that's why I think it's really important at this point, if we're gonna have we need a code of conduct and there should be a social media policy for anybody that sits and represents the voters and the taxpayers and the business owners of this community. I think it's really important. Thank you. I will give you an opportunity to respond if you'd like. Uh, okay. Um, okay, I hear you, Bobby. Thank you for telling me. I mean, it, it was... Um, I had, I wished in retrospect that you had come to me in person because I was hearing things through the grapevine, but not actually from your mouth. So it's good to finally hear what, how you've been feeling. Um, from my side, I didn't feel like I was, um, what you're calling trashing. I felt like I was calling out, um, and responding to a per an individual that was making blatant racist remarks as she was representing the town of Johnson at this event in DC. And that's what upset me. And as a, as a business owner of Johnson, as a citizen of Johnson, as a um, board member, I felt it was, it, that it was in my, right to, to speak out when I hear and see racist comments being made. That's, that is, in my mind, a, a very important function to, to exercise. So that's where I was coming from. Um, and it was towards an individual who made specific racist comments. What, what was racist? I'm trying to figure out what was racist. Um, if you don't like it here, you can leave. Is that the racist? Which part's the racist? Well, I'll have to pull up the entire article. I, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not prepared to to no. give direct quotes right now. But that. But I know for sure that I felt that there were because that's why I responded the way I did. Um, what's concerning to me, uh, so back to the community piece, when somebody makes the comments that she did that I can't exactly quote off the top of my head, to me that is not community building. That is, that is specifically um, targeting specific people that would not feel comfortable in our, you know, in our community. And that is something that I feel like is really important to call out. But I thought inclusively we include everybody. We don't. Don't we? Um, except to, this group. Not, I didn't ever or say you. Or except people who think like Stacy does. Is that right? Um, because I'm if talking that's of, the case, then uh, I fall in the category. Okay, I never put anybody in a category. I was responding to specifically what 
Stacy's remarks were. I never said Bobby Rooney. I never said uh, Casey Romero. I, nev I never named other people. I was responding specifically to her and her comments. Whether you put yourself in that category, that's up in your mind, but well, that's not Johnson Woolen Mills, and that encompasses a, a, a company. The owner of Johnson Woolen Mills. Well, maybe you should have said Stacey Minaj because you dragged um, in others, unbeknownst to them. And like I said, it offended, I was totally offended that somebody that represents my community would even think about doing something like that. And it upset me that someone that she representing our community said what she said. Okay, I'm, I'm going to so that's where interject I was coming here. From. I, I don't think it's going to be productive if we continue, but okay, well, we provide an opportunity yeah. for you to speak. Thank you. Provide Thank an you. opportunity for rebuttal. I, did, did I just you? think that we've got to pull this community together. We all got to work together. And sometimes, it, i got to say, it does <laughs> feel like not everybody is included. It seems like, look, I've been here in rumors that from some some folks that are up here Tuesday night saying, oh, these Greg and John are gonna bring in all these drug addicts and they're gonna buy up every house in town and they're going on and on and on. And I mean, so you're telling me somebody in recovery is not included, included in this statement too? I never, ever, I ever said that. No, no, I never, ever said, said that. Did. But there was people that were up here at David Zuckerman's uh, gathering the other night that that word got back to me and there are people that you know and you hang with so you know i feel like sometimes if you're a donald trump fan then you're not included and you know that's we have to all be included when obama was president i always respected the office i didn't agree with much he did but i respect I respected the office. He was quieter. He didn't make such a fuss, no question. But we're all going to be included in this inclusivity statement. That means if somebody's a Republican that voted for Donald Trump, they should be included too. And I don't feel like sometimes that's the way it works in this town. And so I think that divides. I think your statement was divisive. I don't think it was necessary. I think that you should have just, you know, you're representing this town, and I just feel like you've divided the town by saying where we should be pulling together, that statement divided more. And I just don't. Okay. I know I say things that I shouldn't say to I do. And you're, but you're an official here, and that's, and I, you know, I understand that. I, I do the same thing sometimes, but I think it's something to conclude with here in this. Let's just forget about all the stuff on the right and left. Come to the center. Let's work together. I mean, that's what we got to do. I don't think that's a bad thing. Right. We got to work together as a community. And that's one of the things that Greg and I really want to do. We want to bring this community back together. It's gotten too far apart. It's not but when I grew up here. I've been here for 56 years, and it's changed. And, you know, if you've got a business or I got a business, I'm going to support you. And you know, and I want you to support me. And we have to do it. We have to. We might not agree with each other, but we have to support each other because that's community, and that's what we have to do to make this a better one. And, and I agree for ninety-nine percent of what you're saying, except when people, somebody is making race blatant racist comments, then I can't. I can't just turn a cheek. I can't. I can't um, close my eyes to that. I grew up with Asian brothers that, when you, we were growing up here, experienced racism every day of their life in this community. So, and it's continuing. It, it's, it happens every day here. We don't feel it because we're white, middle class, rich, poor, whatever, but we don't feel how people of color feel on an everyday basis. So I, it's, it's very important to me that I stand up when I hear those kinds of comments being made. So that's where I was coming from with my post. Um, Greg, I just wanted to say that um, I was at David Zuckerman's. I, I didn't hear any of what the rumors you're hearing. Um, public access was there videotaping the whole time. You might want to look at that video, but I, 
I really don't remember anyone saying yeah. those druggies. I, I didn't hear any of that. It got back to me. Uh, okay, you should watch the video because I don't years. think that happened. Not in within well, earshot of me. A pretty reputable source, so I, I'm okay. It did happen. But, okay. You know, that's Look kind at the of, video. That's kind of hurtful. I'm not, I'm not saying David said anything or anybody speaking, but people in the person in the crowd. Okay. And you know that's pretty hurtful when we're trying to do what we're trying to do. Well, before you feel hurt, you might want to watch the video to make sure it really happened because I honestly do not remember hearing any comments like that. I'll take your word. So I, yeah. that's just that's just what I. Remember. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think we'll probably move on now unless the board wants to overrule me. <coughs> I can take that as well. Efficiency. Uh, Efficiency Vermont is doing a button up campaign and they're looking for uh, posts. Uh, LCPC is doing some work with them and they'd like to use Johnson as a host. LCPC has the capacity to run. Uh, one event uh, in the county, run it whole cloth, and they could use Johnson for that. So we could sign on for this with virtually no uh, okay. time or investment on our part. What's the downside? Why wouldn't we do it? Uh, there really isn't one. Okay, then let's do it. We'll have to schedule time for this space, but that shouldn't be yeah. that hard. And uh, if we're really pressed for space, I think do you need a formal vote, or is it just a... More than 49 people? Mm -hmm. I don't know how many are going to attend. I haven't really started the conversation with the efficiency of Vermont. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll take very little of our involvement if we don't want to be involved. Okay. Um, so it's kind of as much time as we want to give it. Um, what are they doing? Do you need... Time? What are they doing? Uh, it's uh, efficiency and specifically geared around, you know, like my house for a winter. So it's an educational process. Yeah. yeah. You need a formal uh, vote from us or just consent? I think consent is fine. Yeah. Is there anyone who has an issue or concern with it? No. Okay. okay. Um, the Loyal Valley Rail Trail is doing another printing of trail maps. Uh, they've got a couple, a little bit more of the trail have been open. I believe these are going to be updated. We are pretty well stocked for existing trail maps. Um, they're still asking for $190 uh, for printing. Where did, are they all over Lamoille County? Is that? Yeah, this yeah. is distributed through all the towns. No, we have plenty. Yeah, we're in a pretty good space. That I believe that these are going to include a little bit more of the trail uh, than our maps do. Our maps are about two years old. So for this 190, what does that get us? Another another box of maps. Updated, updated maps. maps. Yeah. Okay. So moved. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got a motion. A second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Let's close. Next step. Old Mill House. All right. So we've got the BHB memorandum, which details a little bit about this, but uh, so the data gap analysis has included uh, and some of the, we've got a few next steps that we can take, uh, two of which are uh, we're, we're, we should really think about tackling kind of sooner rather than later. They're both going to involve uh, the village also, so this is kind of a preliminary discussion to our joint meeting with the village coming up, but I wanted you to both be aware of the discussion, and uh, if we're not on board, then there's no reason to bring it up at the joint meeting. Um, so the first two actions that we can take, the first one uh, would be to subdivide the parcel so that the old mill house became uh, kind of its own property. At that point, we'd be able to conduct a uh, brownfield study on just that part of the parcel uh, for eventually being able to enroll it in the umbrella program uh, and com 
whether we wanted to stay in that for our own benefit, whether we wanted to sell the property, whatever we wanted to do, we, you know, we're pretty well benefit from that. Um, but primarily using for economic development to sell the property. Um, the reason we did the data gap analysis was because we can't realistically complete for any reasonable amount of money, we can't complete the phase one study of the entire parcel because it contains, uh, it's too large for us to complete for the amount of money we're likely to spend on that property. Uh, and future use of at least some of the property is not likely to include anything where we would need to enroll it in any kind of uh, redevelopment project. So it, it's just not a good use for the whole property, but carving this piece off doing a complete study of this piece is feasible and would meet the goals defined in the uh, area-wide brownfield planning that we did two years ago on Railroad Street. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the trustees did was on there. Uh, the trustees' biggest concern was uh, since there's limited brownfield money, especially for hazardous waste, um, their concern was the powerhouse and diverting any money that they might be able to spend on the powerhouse from the Brownfield Fund. They wanted to go there. They didn't want to open up a new uh, project somewhere else trying to draw money from the same fund. But that's water over the dam now. It's what? They haven't. It's all done water over the dam. Uh, they haven't. Uh, completed, they've completed the teardown, but they haven't completed the phase one, phase two, and uh, any kind of mitigation work that they might be required oh, to do. So there might, we might still, we wouldn't be drawing from exactly the same funds with this, uh, but it still might split resources. So they still might not be interested in uh, enrolling this in a phase one study, but I think we're still further ahead to pursue a subdivision of the property because that's a necessary precondition for any study we do at any time. So if we just do the subdivision now, then we're at least ready at some point in the future to do the study. But they're on board with subdivision. That's going to be a discussion for our joint meeting. They didn't discuss it at their meeting the other night? I don't believe so, or they didn't have an answer. I really think we ought to do the we ought to favor the subdivision and we ought to consider the brownfields. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a village parochial issue uh, out of which they may not get the money because it may go to another area, another town. Uh, it could even go outside of the district. You know? I'm on the brownfields committee for representing us. Uh, we are, um, we'd be well advised to, I think, move ahead with this. And, because you can sometimes go, you go to other districts that have come to us for money and we have funded. The Brownfields Committee is only an advisory committee to LCPC. Yeah. You know, so, so. We I should think, subdivide it. Yeah. Well, I think we should subdivide it and I think we should take a position that we'd be in favor of proceeding, you know, requesting Brownfields money um, and see what comes out of it. Uh, I think that's a very the first thing we got to talk with the trustees on. Are there even an interest in that board on subdividing out the mill house or not? Um, we're, we're certainly using that house very actively between the town and village. Well, that can be our position. Our position is to subdivide it going brownfield, so then we can, if we decide that is our position tonight, we can bring that up at the joint. And if they if they disagree, we're all, we're house, we're nowhere. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I guess the only question I would have is: Has any thought been given to where all of the uh, folks that use the mill house would be relocated to? We don't have that space. We don't have another spot for them yet, but I think that that's. Something we can work out a little bit farther along in the process. Uh, again, this puts us in a position where we're ready to 
do development on the front on the site, but it doesn't commit us to it on any particular timeline. So we have a lot of points along the way where we can figure out what where is the food shelf going to go, where is Troy's office going to go, where the, where will the boys get to meet. Um, it it doesn't and this doesn't help us answer those questions, but. Uh, we don't need to answer those questions yet. We've got a long time before that becomes an issue. And it shouldn't be the initial roadblock. No, I was just wondering if thought had been given to that. Because, I mean, if we're going to develop this site and buy another site to support these functions. You, you can't develop this site without running it through, without subdividing it, without running it through the brownfield. So you may never get to where you actually move these out or get to something, but you have no possibility unless you make this happen. Okay. And so, completing the brownfield study of this, uh, that gets to another recommendation on here, but it's worthwhile for us to complete a brownfield study on any building that we are occupying and using to this extent uh, that we could be if there's contamination in the building and we're you know sending people there for the food shelf and we've got people working there we we ought to know mm -hmm. so i guess the question before us is does the select board want to move forward with this to the trustees for a joint meeting definitely yes yes yeah right. okay um, another point that's going to be kind of short term concern is uh, the trail network that we're talking about with Walter up the hill where we don't think there was any real development or contamination from the telecom. We should still do testing on those soils, uh, at least surface level testing on those soils to make sure there were no airborne contaminations before we send people up there to dig and make trails. What's involved with that? Mm -hmm. I don't have a cost estimate for that. I'm hoping to have a cost estimate for the joint. Uh, but it will be a cost, it will be some amount of money that we might not be, it might not be applicable for brownfield funding, so it might be out of pocket. I, went, I can bet you bottom dollar is not going to be cheap. It, it depends on, in large part, on what they find. Uh, that we can do surface level testing relatively easily on the soils there. Um, if they find something, you know, we do a handful of sites testing. If they find something, we need to do additional testing to find out how bad the contamination is. And that's the price rapidly increases. But if we do some preliminary testing, we can determine you know, the likelihood that there is no contamination if they come back clean. The trustee minutes the other day talked about a mine being up there, but that must have been a miss. Oh, there was a mine up there. There was a mine up there. That's where the original mine was. The trail How much did they get out of it? You can mine it if you walk the right place. Doesn't Vast already have a trail that goes through the middle? They do. Yep. Have they? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> of course, they're using mostly in the, in the winter, but that's right. for maintenance they're using it. I'm not aware of them doing any tests. Well, it's interesting. I mean, we had the, the town have this whole study done seven years ago or whatever. It's one more than seven years ago. Just on the those trip, why would we invest the money in 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 that study if we hadn't done something so elementary? I think more of what Brian's. Where Walter is looking to place the trails is right around this original line. And there may be uh, tailings there that weren't documented. Uh, you know, as of right now, none of that section is, you know, maybe some people walk through there occasionally, but there's no one. No it, it, it's the digging that is especially concerning about what, we don't know what's in the soil. And if there are, especially if there's aerosolized particles from the mill itself that got spread to up there uh, and digging them up if they're fine enough to stir just, them back up and use talcum. I like the coward clever asbestos. I 
is talc considered? A talc isn't. Talc is often found alongside asbestos, though, in the mines. No, but I want to say that. Uh, so we're not aware of asbestos contamination, but uh, the advice we're getting is that they're found together often enough that the recommendation is that we test. Johnson and Johnson has a multi-million dollar judgment against them for talc. Yeah. yeah. Baby powder was not a good idea. So who is this recommendation? Because <laughs> people breathe it all the time for granted. Uh, this you breathe any is... dust, it's going to be bad for you. No. How much digging? I, my impression there wasn't a lot of digging involved in, in this, this trail uh, development. In fact, a lot of the, the, the impact to the ground would be very low. Kurt Mueller from PHB. <laughs> um, I don't think there's a lot of digging involved. I don't think we need to do particularly extensive testing. Yeah. But I think, you know, a couple of surface level tests, like not even really boring, just going out there with a shovel and taking a sample on a couple of different spots uh, is likely to be enough for us to be confident enough that there is a contamination. But there's been no testing right now. Well, how long would that take to get the results back and feel confident one way or the other? I don't think it would be too long. I hope to have uh, more and better estimates from Kurt for our joint meeting. I just hope we don't open up a can of worms here. Any development we do up there has that potential. Well, then we have to decide whether we want the, the potential to spend a lot of money on a trail and uh, how many people are going to take advantage of it? How many people are going to have to pay for it? Uh, I think the potential is a lot of people could take advantage of it. Oh, yeah. so if it, if we, if the soil contamination is there, if we don't feel confident about it, we don't have to build the trail. We can stop. We can say that we think there's contamination up there, but we don't think it's suitable for digging. And, right. um, and again, that is a joint board discussion because yep. it's joint property. All right, and I've got one more recommendation, and it's not great news. Um, we should also really do the testing around the uh, town and village garages uh, for soil testing in those locations also. We don't do a lot of digging there, but we do drive regularly over it. It gets pretty dusty in that area, and we are not confident enough that uh, there isn't some historic contamination on those sites where we're sending workers. I thought we had done that already. Uh, not to any great confidence. Wait, 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 where, um, why is this coming up? Like, is this a this state This is the data gap analysis we did that was an analysis of everything that we don't know about contamination on the site. And when we purchased this property, there wasn't, there must have been, we must have tested it before we bought it and started using it. And it I don't think so. I don't remember. I don't, I mean, we know it was an industrial. We bought it from your dad. <laughs> How long has he been gone? Uh, but we found where there was the issue with the uh, uh, well res. Yep. Residue or... And we used their study documents and what they had. Um, but what was it that caused us to find that? Was, it was the water line that caused us to find that. I think so. I think yeah. that was where it came up. But... Okay. So the only areas that have been tested is where the water line was run up Len Len Lenwee Lane. We've got a handful of test wells that we have placed out there because of that discovery. Yep. But we don't know. Yeah, but th those are all closer uh, to the water table. Right. right? They're not. They're up on the hill where we've got workers. Uh, and some of the stories, especially from. Uh, uh, especially that old open building in the back. Um, they're pretty concerning. 
So that's another topic for the joint meeting. We're gonna make friends with the trustees. <coughs> won't be the first time. <laughs> and it won't be the last. Citizens budget. So I've started a little bit of work on our budget already. If we're gonna do a citizens budget committee, we should release uh, put out an invitation uh, now. So I'm thinking of, I'll, with the board's permission, I'll draw up a uh, posting for it and place it on front porch form. Yeah, I'm not sold on the idea of a budget, citizens budget committee. I still feel like that's, uh, that's why we were elected, that's what we do. And um, I'm, I'm not convinced that that's the direction that I want to go in. Mm -hmm. Remind me of the detail. I feel like it's been a long it's time been a long since time. we yeah. talked yeah. about it. Did it come out of a town meeting? Uh, I brought it. Mike, Mike brought, I brought it. Mike. Uh, Cambridge does it, and uh, they're very happy down there, I guess, with it. You know, they look into everything. The they, they look into, you know, even, uh, you know, when we have a dozen, 15 groups of people that are looking for money on town meeting day, mm -hmm. they look at their balance sheets, they look at all of their financials uh, they keep track of everything they they look after uh, their own fire department down there which their fire department is part of their their town mm -hmm. but there'd be nothing wrong with our budget committee looking at you know the budget for the our fire department to make sure that uh, you know we're getting the best value for our dollar you know and there's a lot of things that uh, people uh, especially uh, people with an accounting background uh, can see that we can't see or have a better handle on certain things than we do. Uh, they can find a lot of stuff in, in a balance sheet that we, we might overlook. I mean, not to say that Brian or you, I mean, you've been involved, Rosemary has and everything else, but you know, some of the people that aren't in the weeds every day, uh, they might have a better handle on it. And especially if we put out the, uh, a call for people with uh, budgetary experience or uh, experience as far as uh, CPAs and things of that nature. I mean, uh, Walter Pomeroy comes to mind. I mean, uh, who better would you want on a, uh, a budget committee than Walter Pomeroy? Right now, uh, they would look into everybody's budgets uh, to make sure that uh, everything is running smoothly. I mean, obviously a group like that would be able to have the time and dedicate time to just looking at all of the budgets. The luxury we don't have. But I question, do you think there's interest out there in the community of anybody wanting to serve like that? Well, we certainly won't know unless we ask. So would this committee, they would just give us recommendations they wouldn't be actually oh, right, making right. any. You brief the board on your discussion of Cambridge? Um, I didn't, I don't have a ton of details, but Cambridge really, they like theirs. Uh, their budget committee uh, spends a lot more time with the individual, uh, the other committees and resources. They spend more time with you know the library and rec and historical, if we went with the same model. Uh, that I'm able to spend individually. Uh, so Cambridge liked it, rather likes it. Uh, they're, they're satisfied with how it works for them. So they're going to keep it on even though now they're a five board town yes. administrated town now. They, they are keeping it for now. Because it made But it, this is yeah. their first full year with the town administrator and the budget. Yeah, I'd be curious to hear how that goes now that they're a five person board and have a town administrator. Before, I mean, I could see where they would absolutely need the extra help and input. There were three members and no administrator. That's mind boggling to me. Well, a lot of other towns have budget committees, so it isn't just Cambridge. Okay. Okay. A lot of them do. I'd be interested in what Casey thinks of this as somebody who might be grilled. I, my mind's a little tired at this point. Um, 
Well, Lois was a, Lois was a conservation historical society. Would you want that oversight? I think it's a good idea to have a, a, a budget committee of finance. Municipal governments have it. Um, and they have the authority to To me, so much of budgeting is, is about setting priorities for the town. And I uh, really feel like that's what our job is as a board. I, I'm not wanting to cede a lot of that um, responsibility. I don't think you are. Well, if we, I gotta say, that if we don't cede some power to them, I think we're gonna have a hard time getting people who wanna serve. I mean, right. Who wants to serve on the budget committee if they, right. the recommendations are over it. Yeah. Well, they, everybody understands when you're on any kind of a subcommittee or whatever that you answer to the board of directors. And uh, a lot of times people don't get their own way uh, every time they bring something forth and they understand that. I don't know what kind of power we figure we're going to give them. They're just going to look into it, uh, make recommendations. We're not going to give them power to cut people's budgets or, or things of that nature. Uh, so I don't see uh, losing any power on the board. They're just going to make recommendations. Have, they have to bring forth some kind of uh, supporting documentation for a recommendation, I would think. So then we would have to either uh, go with it, for it, or against it. We could do a pilot program for one year and see how it works, and if we can even get people to uh, to volunteer to be on. I've done budget planning sessions before and had no attendance. Yeah. That's where you're just talking I'm, I'm, to them. I'm, gonna, I'm working on the budget. I've got a draft copy, yeah. and I'm happy yeah. to run through and explain the draft copy. But if it's a different aspect if they're part of building the budget versus I hope so. right. Yeah, that, that's the idea is that if it's if it's, we're drafting it together, I hope that we might get some attendance. We could just see where it goes. You could just put it out there that we're we're wanting to, to do this and just reaching out if anybody wants to volunteer to be on it. And if nobody wants to volunteer, then I guess that's the answer to our question. I, I don't think it's a matter of people coming forward. You, of course, can't do it without people coming forward, but I, I'm with Matt on this. I, I, if I have a committee, I really, if I'm delegating to them to look into every, every institution or board that we have's budget, I want to respect what they have to say, which to me means that I'm, I'm delegating it to them. And I don't want to, I feel that's my responsibility. I would really love to have these people come and say at our at our budget meetings, well, what are you doing about this, or why is this, or um, have some participation or participation with the Brian, but I don't want to delegate to them and not respect the thing. I I want because I, I I want to be able to say uh, uh, or I, I would. I don't want them to be saying, you know, well, why am I doing this job if you're not going to be, you know, not going to be following my opinion or taking our advice? I don't think it's as easy as, as well, uh, you know, you get to decide and we knew we were, you know, we, we knew we might not be followed. I think people get invested in this stuff. Casey? Yeah, yeah. Part of the reason I didn't have something to say earlier was because when the topic was first raised, I got thinking about, <laughs> I always have trouble reading, literally reading and understanding what the town budget is about. And so I was thinking <clears throat> that a committee, a citizen committee, could 
make suggestions just literally on how it looks, how it's laid out, how it's presented. And so I got then wondering about um, if it was a committee that was advisory to actually work with the prior budget uh, to say, again, looking at you know, how it's set out and, and laid out and labeled and so forth. Um, and in doing so, look at, well, you know, I never did understand, you know, actually what is that expense or why is it so high or why is it changed or whatever, um, to ask those kind of questions. And, but it not pertinent, actually, to forming the, the projected budget. Because, um, I don't know, I just, I just see that that could be really obstreperous um, <clears throat> to a group such as yourselves and, and, and Brian, who's trying to formulate, I don't know, I just see that as really complicated. I, I see that, I see that there will be value <clears throat> in an advisory group looking at how the budget's put together and in doing so, raising questions and things that just plain don't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. so. What did Cambridge say about their responsibilities? What did they do with their They're changing a little bit with the new administrator. So well, that's a hard well, question to answer okay, right now. Okay. What's the board's thought? Do we want to go forward with this or table it? My position is pretty much the same as always. Table it. So. Well, no, I'm not wanting to table it. <laughs> Just to not do it. Not do it. That's me personally. That's okay. my one. So I want to get one fifth. When I first brought it up, there was quite a lot of interest in it. What changed here? I said the same thing. When you brought it up in March, I didn't say I'm not interested in it. I said I've got reservations about. It's probably we're so fatigued from doing that budget. Like, that's that's great. You know, I'm that's about it. No, I said I would think about it, but that I'm not. Uh, I'm not sold on it. You got a touch uh, on. You felt as if you were going to be losing some kind of control. Uh, yeah, right. No, not if it's advisory. No, but you mentioned it a little bit earlier tonight, uh, losing a little bit of control, the board losing control of so the I see that it's our responsibility to set those sorts of priorities for the town. Right. We still do set priorities for the town. Mm -hmm. All they're doing is just going over the budgets and going over them with a, like a fine tooth comb. Well, again, I mean, I think all the arguments have kind of been gone through and we're just on different sides. I mean, I, I, I think Doug's response to that was really spot on that if you, if you, if you ask volunteers to do a job and they do it for you and then you second guess them and say and redo the whole thing according to your own values as opposed to their you know their their decisions then um, it undermines their work and it makes them wonder why they want to do it so i'm, I'm persuaded by by that point easily persuaded <laughs> I think it's a good point, point, Mike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I would actually like to see is I'd like to see Walter and some like-minded people uh, participating. You know, when, when Brian holds a meeting and says, you know, I'm going over the budget, you know, I'd like to see where there they could get into the nitty gritty. And this is why we haven't delegated them, but they, they could put some input into this. You know, we, as we go through this from, we say, you know, during the year, well, we need more or less money or here's something we need to change. You know, we, we operate on the past and we're predicting the future from the past, but we, we try to adjust it, you know? So there, there's a lot of value in the wisdom of the past, but it, there's also inertia. So I would love to see these people Ask, looking for some volunteers not to be on the committee, but to be willing to examine the budget and attend meetings with you when you're when you're refining it. That's a good compromise. I would support that. And yeah. All we got to do now is find some way to do it. Right. I think we need to be if more diligent about kind of you know really getting the word out that these budget meetings are like you know be more proactive on getting people to attend. Yeah. 
that basically accomplishes what I would like to see done anyway, which you mm -hmm. just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that would be great if that could happen. Well, I mean, all of our meetings are open. Every citizen in town has. Right, but, you know, people, we got to make sure that people are wanted, you know, to participate and to get the word out there that we, we respect their opinion. And so, I mean, we res respect Walter's opinion. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I disagree with Walter on an awful lot of Me too. So. <laughs> but, but the thing is, we respect his opinion. Um, Lewis. Sorry. Yes, Lewis. I just wanted to say that it's one thing to just invite people to a committee, it's another to have them be able to come to fair and to have information. You know, when we sit here, like tonight, I don't have anything to go from except for reading the last minutes and, and that kind of thing. For financial stuff, you need to have something that you can process before you get yeah. time to read it to look at a bunch of yeah. So I think that's a piece that has to be built into mm -hmm. what you're trying to do. And it doesn't have to be a committee. It just has to be, like Doug is saying, some targeted people who are then set up to be prepared to help. And you may actually have to reach out to them and say, hey, you, yeah. we want you to do this because nobody wants to volunteer. You had, you know, it would be a vital, a good service to us, you know. But yes, they they can't just walk in. You you would have to send out and say, this is what we're doing, you know. Take a look at this. I think it's a good service to the taxpayers, too, because the more people who have an understanding about the budget, um, oh, yeah. the better the discussion will be when we get to the time. Are you saying it's good to co-op somebody? <laughs> She's volunteering. <laughs> she volunteers for everything. It's my sister who does the leadership. Am I sensing sort of a board agreement that that might be the right approach? I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Why do they? So, I'm going to have to get my way out. <laughs> All right. Planning Commission. Uh, so there's a vacancy on the planning commission. Uh, Phil Wilson has resigned. Did we accept his resignation? Uh, I suppose we haven't accepted his resignation. Do you have a formal resignation? Uh, no, I'll get it. <coughs> he came to my office and told me. Verbally? Verbally. Okay. He didn't give me a signed letter. What's the board's pleasure? Accepted. Motion to accept. Second. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor, sing for me, say aye. 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 I suppose. And then planning committee vac vacancy. So posting at the normal fashion. Do we have any other vacancies we need to post? I think the Conservation Commission um, continues on in July. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Hillary. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then we post planning in the newspaper also because it has uh, statutory statutory authority. Thing. Yep. Fire service. So we have a draft of the agreement for services between the town and village of Johnson to fire. Uh, as you recall, our discussion last year, uh, I didn't print a copy of last year's contract to put in front of you, but as you recall, uh, we found that last year's contract, we weren't really obeying it to the letter of the contract. We were, yeah, it meant, it said in the contract that service began January 1st, but we weren't signing the contract until, you know, February. Um, the it didn't have an out clause, so if the, our budget got voted down at town meeting, we didn't have any way to reconcile but the voters decision to not support a uh, fire contract or if the village voters decided to eliminate the fire department, there was no, uh, yeah, the, the, there were a lot of contingencies that just didn't support this. So they were, submitted a draft revision. Uh, at our joint meeting, they've requested that if we're to discuss this, that we have a specific counter proposal uh, rather than an open discussion. Hmm. 
Does everybody have the opportunity to read it? No. You don't have to problem with it. I think that this addresses our central concern, which is that there was no way to terminate the contract. Yeah. Um, and this provides that. And if I'm not mistaken, it's only a 3.5% increase. That's estimated. That's that is true. not the uh, final number for the business. But it's going to be pretty close. I, mean. I, I wouldn't take that on faith. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any specific reason to think that it's going to be different, but. Um, yeah, I I'm not going to plug that number in. No, I wouldn't either. You know, Meredith provided some uh, pretty useful and detailed comments. I better be careful what I say. I'll get in a minute. Get on video. That would be a first. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> but if it sticks with what, I, close to what they got here, it'll be all right. I think it pretty much addresses what we had identified you know, back last winter or whenever. Formalize with us on uh, quarterly payments. Uh, you know, it commits us to uh, paying them for uh, the remainder of uh, our financial year that we've committed to, which is fine for us because if, if our voters approve us signing the contract, but uh, then we want it to go through the whole financial year. So, as long as we have an opt out at July 1st, if the voters happen to, on town meeting, not authorize the expenditure, uh, it works for us. Yeah. And it also works for us in that they're committed to the June 30th of us. Uh, yeah, that they have to provide right. the fire service. Service. The Even if they're voters would be interested in how they would do it if their voters didn't authorize the fire department. I can't imagine they ever would though. No. It's unlikely, but it, it's a good idea for us both to have a termination. Yeah. A, a, an ability to terminate the contract. Uh, <coughs> before we sign anything, it's probably worth it to have it reviewed by our attorney. Yep. But, there are no specific changes, or if you want a uh, little bit of time to review and get back to me. Does every, anybody have any concerns? No. Okay. no. Does everybody agree we, we should, should run it through our attorney? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so run it through the attorney. Okay. One hour. <laughs> Limited one hour. All right. Joint meeting. No Uh, you've got a draft updated uh, agenda. Uh, Meredith is not going to be able to attend the meeting, so there are a couple changes that they wanted to make from the earlier draft version, um, specifically dealing with uh, employees. Uh, the you know the gist of uh, the biggest thing for the employees is. is uh, that everybody's aware of the changes that the state approved for healthcare costs increase this year. Mm. Uh, and what that's, that's going to be difficult for us to absorb. How far along did you guys get with the joint employee discussions? Not very far. Uh, we talked, I, I talked to uh, town of Rockingham. Uh, they have joint employees in a pretty simple situation. They're quite happy with how it's working. They would, they would not be interested in changing anything for, from their perspective. Uh, Mary's talked with a couple other communities and I don't have her reward. Did you guys look into how we would go about 
separating them and having a an agreement and all of that? A little bit. We were in talking to other communities, we were hoping to find another community who had gone through that process and learn a little bit from them about what worked and what didn't work and kind of what pitfalls they had. So we're, we're definitely not ready to make a recommendation yet on what okay. the process would look like if we decided to go ahead with it. Um, yeah, we're still okay. still on that research phase of the what's working for other communities. So the other question was on the merger study, um, would we like to invite the merger study builders or bidders to speak and answer questions? Um, in the discussion I had with Brian, I was sort of questioning why would we bring them in a second time? What was the purpose of having yourself and Scott and developing questions and submitting them? <laughs> You know, and then, oh, okay, we're not happy with the answers, or what? But that was just a question I had. I don't see a huge what, value in it. What did you and Scott decide? We sent our questions off. I thought we were fine with that. We sent our questions off. Like we got responses from the three <laughs> bidders. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I don't see, I'm with, Eric, I don't see a need to call them back in. Reading the trustees' minutes from last week, um, they feel strongly that we should call them right. back in. If they want to call them back in, I don't have an objection, but um, I, I'm pretty, I have a pretty good sense of how I feel, you know, which direction I'm headed, leaning with the decision. So, so they're not calling them in for this meeting, right? It would be they would like to call them, call them in for this meeting. meeting. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we sort of have to decide if we're, I, mean, I guess, yield to them. If it's important to them, I mean, I just know what the downside is. But. I can't imagine it. You can't imagine what? <laughs> Bringing them in. You know, it seems to me, you know, just perpetual backing off of stuff. Yeah. I, I, well, I think we need to be prepared to make a decision on Monday. Yes. Yeah. You have a recommendation. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know if that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, we, should be, we should have a recommendation. We should, the board should be. Not before we even have the bidders come in. <laughs> well, we're saying no, no, no. They, we could have that. There's no need for the bidders to come in. True, but right. And so the deal is, if there was no need for the bidders to come in, our committee representative would have a recommendation that he could give to us. Yeah, I think that's where we're all parked. Except the village trustees want the bidders to come in. Well, I think that's foolish because maybe, but. They, <laughs> we can't they have a committee member that sits with them, and I'm sure that they must have some kind of a, somebody in mind ahead of time without wasting two other people's time to come in. Would you think that would be a waste of people's time? It is for me, because I know who I prefer, but... Uh... But we can't they, speak for the trustees. If they want more information, they can get more information. That's fine. We should be there when they're getting more information. So okay. Yeah, too. that's for sure. But yeah, I, mean, I don't want to keep kicking this can down the road. Greg? Um, I'm wondering, instead of spending this money, could you uh, ask the people in the town whether they would, because you're going to, they're the ones that are going to vote on whether you merge, right? Right. I mean, why, why pay these guys to do that? Just Put it out there on well, they've already done it. The what voters, yeah, they've already done it. Yeah. The voters gave us authorization to spend this money to have a study done. They gave us a mandate to do that. Mandate to do it. They didn't give us any any dollar figure. The, the trustees have a dollar figure of four thousand. So that was kind of the rub in some of the discussions because they said they were only going to pay four. 
whoever it was, the town was going to have to make up the difference. And it started out anywhere from 9,300 to 18,000 to 32,000, correct? Yeah. And so now it's all been pared down to approximately $10,000 a piece, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. We ballpark. don't have a final number from uh, the, the eighteen thousand dollar. No, uh, the ninety three hundred. Ninety three hundred. Yeah, because we got a firm one for the for the thirty two down in town, yeah. which is a less scope of work and one person doing it instead of team and a bunch of other things that were taken off from that. I think it's an insult to them to ask them to come in and talk to us about this after they've done it, you know? I, I don't even... Well, they could refuse if they feel Yeah, they insulted, could refuse, right? but I, I think I have refused to be part of a really bad process. <coughs> you know. It's been a difficult process already. Uh, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. I just... I. Mm -hmm. How do we move forward? How do we move forward with the trustees if we say they can't come in? Well, I, I think I think if they want to invite them, they can. But I think you should tell them that this, the, the invitation is not from the select board, as we don't think it's necessary. I could buy that. So pass on to the trustees that they can invite them if they see the need. But we're ready to move forward. Yeah, without it, and that a letter to them should indicate that a letter to the people should indicate that the select board was not offering this. You know, this is coming from the uh, trustees. I know that's kind of a poison pill, but not necessarily. Well, it's probably pretty poison. You know, I, w I would say something like that. If I was writing the letter, I'd say we're happy for the process and, and their participation so far. We just don't think it's necessary to put a burden on them to come in for this. If you wish to invite them, that's fine. But please tell in your letter, indicate that this request is coming from you and not from, from the select board. Well, it can't be a letter. It's got to be, I mean, they would be invited in for next Monday night, correct, Brian? Is that Yeah, that's the trustee's request. Just to make this clear that we're talking about inviting them in for next Monday. We're not. So it's a matter of agenda scheduling. Well, that's part of it. So they could schedule it for the trustees agenda. Sure, I would want to sit in if they're going to get more information. Well, we're part of the public. It's a public meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that's really a hyper-technical. That, you know. that would be funny. I'd sit in the audience and have them have a meeting. Oh, I could. Uh, I just kidding. I don't know what to say. I just convinced it's a waste of time. You know, the deal is these $10,000 for a study is here at small potatoes. I mean, it's not like we're having a half a million dollar study or something. We're bringing somebody in half a dozen times to grill them with everything else to make it good look down or whatever. It's a, in the whole scheme of things, this is a rinky day study. Well, that, that's part of my concern about this thing. Is we started out with, with a Cadillac, and basically I was educated. So, oh, there's a hell of a lot more to this than that I thought of. And now my position is, should we even bother to spend this kind of money? Because are we going to get a work product worth having? Mm -hmm. Well, so maybe we do need to get on the same page before we... Mm -hmm. Because I think that... The, forget the names of the companies now, but the, the one that scored the highest, but was the most expensive, has now come in with uh, $10,000 a $10,000 quote, and we're getting their principal owner of the company who has the most experience. One of the reasons, we, one of the reasons that they scored so highly mm -hmm. on top was experience, mm -hmm. still bringing that experience. So I think it's, it seems, it seems there's really no question in my mind that they would be the obvious choice. I would support them very strongly instead of saying we don't support the study at all at this point because it's not going to give us as much as we initially asked for. And the principal player had a relative, Montgomery, 
so that's the change. Yeah, the local tie dynamics. He has a, a, a personal interest in it, personal stake. Yeah. If you would like to make a motion, you could mo make a motion tonight that we hire the one that came in and did modify $10,000 and then ask the trustees to join us. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to move forward like that without <laughs> discussing. You know, I got in and out. Well, I don't think. We, yeah, I, no, I don't think we should make that motion. We we should have that in the meeting. That's the joint meeting. You know, if that that, if that and you know, like I was saying, we have to respect people who have uh, um, worked on things. You know, you you put more work on this than I have, so I will listen to you, and I will review more. I will review the materials again, etc. So oh, well, don't put too much stock in that. I, Scott and I came up with a list of questions based on stuff that we did in, in, uh, in a joint meeting. And it, it's not like we put a lot of extra study in it than you guys. Uh, you know, but. Well, we had the both uh, boards. We had the best people working on it. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Did you guys release the bid? Prices. I'm wondering how this guy comes from 32,010 if he didn't know what the competitor bid was. When we opened the bids, it's all public information. So and then he decided all of a sudden he didn't need that other 22 grand. We went back to him with what our budget was and said, What can you provide for this amount of money? And he came back with a counter proposal. Actually, that's and you not the case with him. He if you recall, it was uh, a pretty contentious at that meeting that he watched the video or he, he offered us 10,000. Like he, he sent uh, the meeting after the our initial meeting where we unveiled the bids and we couldn't come to a decision. Okay. After that meeting, he, before our next meeting, he sent us a new proposal before we'd asked for it. Right. Before we'd oh. asked for it. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, because there was some thought that you had seen. I that's very accurate. I mean, the other guy came in with his best price, and now this guy gets another chance. They all did. Uh, they all did. Right. That's why, <laughs> that was why the decision was. I can tell you that if it was me, I was a lot better than people did that. I wouldn't be happy. Nor would I ever give you another bit again. That's not happening. It's just not happening. But that's why that's we opened it up to everybody and allowed everybody a chance to submit a revised bid. Well, we'll tell uh, he knew what the price was, so of course he was going to bid last. Yep. Yeah. That's just wrong. Because our, our criteria, we had a five, uh, five point criteria. One of those was price. Uh, the other companies scored quite lowly in the other areas, including experience and methodology. So they weren't giving us the same, whereas the, you know, the company that came in at 32,000 scored higher in those other four areas and scored lowly on, on cost. So we're not, uh, we're not the, the only consideration is on cost. And that, was, and, that was, and that was explained at the outset when we, in our um, request yeah, for a proposal. So it's a little different than your kind of. A it's been a very open and very you had all of these material and stuff that you were bidding against, and and so then he came back, like I mentioned a little bit before, it was really pared back what he was doing. It was giving us something similar to what everybody else was giving us. But if he didn't see the prices on the video, do you think he would have bet ten thousand dollars? He certainly wouldn't have submitted something unsolicited. Everybody. Everybody had the opportunity to rebid with well, all of the same information. I'm like being here is when I'm low bidder on something and it's rebid and everybody knows what my bid is, of course I'm going to be cheaper. It's, it's not fair. If price not is the fair, only criteria. Yeah, I'm just saying if it was me, I, don't, I would be pretty upset about it. So, you know, you guys do what you want. To me, that guy lost his video. He knew how much the price was, so he's like, "Well, I got to be three hundred dollars less than the rest of them to get this crop done." The other people, I just, I just don't like that shady. I we bid every day, and when we bid, we 
find that out, we don't get it. So that's the way I treat these people. GCs, we don't work for them. They're always playing for your numbers. And we're just like done. Okay? Good money and other work, I don't need to do anything. So that's my, from the business point, you guys have got to look at it from the slot work. We, I looked at it from the point of view that we wouldn't have accepted these. I wouldn't have voted for the other two bids. I wouldn't have accepted no matter what the price was. Yeah. They we, weren't going to give us a good product, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're lucky to get it. Uh, I just don't wonder if that process is. Yeah. Uh, so wouldn't work for me. Uh, but, like, again, you're not. Yeah, yours are just slightly different, though. You've got parameters, you know exactly what you're bidding on. They didn't know for sure, and they were just, you know, one gave us a Cadillac and one gave us a Chevy or something, you know. That's the type of a, one was going to give you a much bigger study. And yeah, somebody, here. yeah so you, you know how that worked. So it wasn't quite the same deal that you work with all the time. Right. So I guess back to the question, the, the trustees want to reinvite the bidders in? They can. They can. They can start putting a bit of judgment, but. Right. Okay. They can. But it should be noted, like you said, that they are the ones that didn't come in. Um, is that something the board wants to make clear? I think so. It's fine with me. Okay. All right. So, uh, I'll communicate that to Jordy and Mary. Yep. Okay. Anything else on the merger or the uh, joint meeting? Does that pretty much cover? It? We've already talked about most everything on here. David, come in for that. Bye, Liz. Uh, David won't be able to make it, but uh, Carl Powell should. Okay. I confirmed with Carl that he has time for it. Uh, he's just waiting for the uh, final agenda. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. He's your referee. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just a little bit. Economic development. So the LEDC's annual lunch, and we talked about this last time, uh, we do need to actually sign up for whoever wants to go. Uh, Right. So there was some discussion about who uh, was going to go. It's October 17th. They're really looking for a committal because they spent so much money per I head. can, what, uh, for lunch? Yeah, noon time. Noon, I can do it. Right. They got to search scallops? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on that board? Bring it back. Greg? Yeah, you're on the LADC board. I don't think so. We do work for Oh, on the LEDC. Yes, I am. Okay. I missed Yes, 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 I missed Day, what day of the week is the That's a Thursday. Thursday. And you said it's at the Tech Center? Yep. Okay. Sure, I'll go. Mike? If I'm not working, I, I run the antique shop. You're retired. You don't work. No, I, I've been running the antique shop okay. since the first thought. Well, if you're going, you got to sign up. So. Well, you can always say you're going and not show up. That way they have I, food uh, food. Uh, <laughs> They're specifically asking us so it doesn't happen. Okay. Well, in that case, I, I you know, it's, it would be tentative for me, so I'd probably have to that. Okay. Uh, Sheriff's report, that's just informational, right? Uh, no update at this time on like industrial park. The, Gosh. Uh, Northern Borders made their awards to... <laughs> Forestry related, uh, but they haven't made the awards for the rest of the fund. So. Gosh, way to keep us on the oh, edge of our seats. Yeah. That was a good uh, presentation you set out. Yeah. To the sheriff's too. Yeah, the yeah. PowerPoint from the sheriff is really good. It's interesting. I get a lot of people talking about the uh, 
Before we go into the additional items, is there any old business to review? I don't think so. Uh, Heather Rodriguez, something correct, maybe? I don't know anything about it. Uh, Heather has, uh, we had talked about bringing Heather on to consult uh, for us and paying her the rate of the rec coordinator she has countered and asked to be paid at a consulting fee of $125 an hour. How much did you want to use her? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that, that's. Does Lisa need her? It would be pretty helpful. Um, you know, if you wanted to approve, you know, an hour or two, then we could use it as needed. Um, or well, an hour uh, would be pretty quickly. I mean, she she comes in one day, she'll be here an hour. Uh, it would probably most. I would expect mostly to spend it responding to emails and phone calls. I don't think that we would. I don't imagine that Heather would want to spend, well, we wouldn't pay her for travel time at that rate. Yeah. And I don't think we would want, I don't think she'd want to come in for a 15, 20 minute consult that we would try and spread this out as much as we could. Or you can decline. Is the rec yeah. committee discussed this? Is this something Lisa asked for? Uh, this is the, the change in rate is. Well, who asked for her help? Lisa. Lisa has asked for her help. I don't know that Lisa knows about. In the past, we talked about bringing Heather back as a consul at the coordinator cell. Uh, but since she doesn't have the health benefits, she doesn't have the regular job, she doesn't have anything else that would go along with that position, she feels that wants more than the rec coordinator sent uh, and asked for specifically $125 an hour. Okay. Any other business to review? Um, if Lisa comes back to us with something specific. Yeah. Okay. But otherwise, um, that's, uh, I'm, I'm not seeing the necessity to spend it on. All right. Okay. Uh, something to do with the Holcomb House? Uh, update on the Holcomb House. Oh, yes. Uh, I was, I did an inspection today. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, Brian and the road crew were a big help on uh, both getting those moorings in uh, for the the piers and concrete that went really well. Uh, Jason and the, the guys did a really good job of Kind of maintaining safety and, and uh, you know, good. being, yeah, they did a really good job and were really direct about safe procedures and, and you know, we're not, you know, kind of directing Stanley and other folks who wanted to gawk and watch of, you know, get back, like, the, maintaining a safe work site. Yeah. So our guys did a good job. It looks good. The porch. Uh, That's yeah. that good. Stanley and Bruce did a good job. Um, they, we had a couple corrections that we asked them to do during the week, and they, they did them great. Uh, so yeah, it, the end product is looking really good. The decorative posts were not able to be salvaged. They've been chopped and rebuilt a few too many times, so that uh, they weren't. It wasn't possible to. You know, do it again and get them to fit properly. You um, could remake some. There's a guy up in Hyde Park that has a lathe big enough to do the porch pumps. Although it's probably too late now. It's They're too late now, dead. but we could we could put some decorative trim or something in. Uh, that was my call. That uh, you know, when we talked about the project originally, the price was. Five thousand dollars. It counted on reusing a bunch of material. Now that we found a lot more rot and a lot more other things, we were running the price tag up pretty quickly. So uh, some of the decorative materials didn't get replaced with new decorative material. Yeah. 
He's not saying it was one of six. Yes, yeah, but not the other guy was fine. Uh, Stanley was between five and six, but uh, yeah, it, it's gonna. We're gonna get a pretty good product out of it. Uh, they did a good job buttoning up that wall that wasn't properly encapsulated mm -hmm. with the vinyl siding. Uh, had a lot of rock there. Uh, we might have some. Well, we have a couple of work in the future. We, we know a couple of our next projects on the house, uh, besides the angled posts in the back. Um, if you look underneath the stairs on the left hand front entryway for the historical society portion, you can see that the uh, metal posts that that deck is on are pretty thoroughly rotted through. Uh, yeah. So that. It's going to come down pretty. Good. We're going to want to replace that in the not too distant future. That um, roof could be improved right now. Water comes off the peak of the front of the house. A portion of it will hit that roof over the left hand door and end up uh, either into that corner that was plywooded where we saw the most rock or onto the decking of our, um, our porch. Uh, that's probably why the, there's quite as much rot in the corner as there was and that also is probably why there were cracks in a lot of the vinyl is ice taking that same path of you know, going from the left hand roof sliding off and striking the side of the house on the right hand side. So can we use gutters or anything to direct the water? Uh, gutters, yes, I don't know what we can do about ice. Stanley thinks it's a little bit all insulation in that building. Yeah, they think that it's pretty severely under insulated. Yeah. Uh, That's like a, our first step is going to be to stop the water infiltration, but then we'll have more work to do on it. <laughs> but we'll have a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to attend that button on Vermont. Yeah. Like I said before, the kid keeps on taking it. Yep. It's going to be close to 12 grand if it's all that, right? It could be. I didn't get. Uh, the, the porch is coming in less than I had feared, uh, but more than we asked. Uh, <laughs> so I, I hope that our final price is going to be less than 10000 but it might not be. Uh, there is a problem. So then I don't have an estimate for you tonight on the angle prices in the back, uh, but that's coming up relatively soon also. Uh, and that's related to the <laughs> problems that uh, Brian, the historical society communicated to Brian with water infiltration on that portion of the house. Some of it, at least, is coming in through those angle prices. Uh, that's not the only place that we're getting water infiltration, but that's one of them. On that great print that you gave us earlier, yep. that's going to address that. That's going to address a portion of it, but it's, and if we do the angle braces at the same time, uh, we at least don't have to mobilize our guys twice and they'll have equipment out there. And it'll be pretty, we'll save a little bit of our own time <coughs> if we can manage that. But I don't have a cost estimate for you for how much the, that's gonna be. Okay. So I'm gonna work with Stanley and Brian to try and time that for uh, our October 7th meeting. Mine road. Mine road, I did. I followed up on mine road. Um, there is a little bit of junk left in our right of way, but everything else should be gone. Um, He's buried the power line? He has buried the power line. He, I did misspeak last time. I think I suggested that he had buried the power line outside of our right of way. It is inside our right of way, but he did follow the full permitting procedure to bury it inside our right of way. Okay. Uh, so he followed it. It's now legal and above board like any place else we would have a very power line. Uh, the structures he has, he's moved outside the right of way and we've communicated to him that uh, any 
any changes or any seasonal work that he does, like the power the uh, sap lines that go up in the winter, he needs uh, to work with us on those. That, that can be, depending on what he's doing, it might be an amendment to his permit, but uh, we will revoke his permit if anything shows up there that hasn't been approved. Good, okay, good, thank you. Uh, college, how it went up at the college? Yeah, no. uh, three of us, Doug, Matt, and I were there. Um, where did it go? Um, yeah, the, the, the first part was just sort of a presentation from the chancellor and the board on where they see the, the state of things and um, currently and the trends. Um, Will we do? gloom and doom trends um and then the second part was the public input part so um there was a i think a really decent showing from the community um that got up and spoke and said some great points um so basically they were they're compiling you know public input and uh hopefully not going to make any rash <laughs> Decisions. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, the chancellor and this subcommittee of the um, of the board released a white paper this summer, which just came out in, in August, um, looking for the way forward uh, for the Vermont College uh, system, Vermont State College system, um, including CCV and Castleton and uh, Vermont Tech and Northern Vermont University, and um, it, it is a lot of doom and gloom. Um, there's a, there's some good news. Um, our campus here in Johnson is doing quite well. Enrollment's up um, significantly. Um, I think Elaine is doing just quantitatively. You can see by the data that she's doing a really excellent job. Um, but it's it's tough in other areas. It can't, there's a lot of deferred maintenance on the campus. It's expensive, so they're looking at, at things to do. Jeff Spalding has in the media said that closing a, a campus is a, a, a possibility. Um, I think he I think he uh, was very intentional in saying that. I don't think he's that, that lightly. Um, and uh, certainly he got an earful in Linden. Uh, last week um, from people saying that they shouldn't close that campus and that's incredibly important to the region and uh, they got a similar message here in Johnson that um, that, that institution is really integral to, to the success and, and to the uh, economic vitality of this uh, of this region mm -hmm. so um, they're gonna yeah they're collecting ideas on, on how to move forward, whether they're going to invest more heavily in online education, which seems to be um, something the chancellor is really interested in, um, or, or, or what they're going to do in order to sustain the system and keep and keep uh, keep going. Um, and so we have to wait and see. They're taking uh, they continue to take ideas and suggestions online on their website, which is hard to find and navigate, um, but it's tough I heard the Johnson had a lot going for it because they were much more, there was several, there was a very civil discussion here. I think it was pretty heated in Lindenville. Given That's what I mean. Johnson was very civil and heated in Lindenville and Johnson has picked up 250 more students. And where, yeah, the, and, the, uh, the, the tone from the, from the board was pretty defensive coming into it. They were they were loaded for bear. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the the crowd was, as you say, it was civil, but um, definitely concerned. They definitely got the point across that this this is a really essential institution for our if, community. If I'd been on that, <clears throat> been a trustee of that <clears throat> board, I would have thought that we ought to be doing exactly what they're doing. You know, which is uh, taking a look at where they are, you know, the, the numbers, you know, it's been clear for a long time how expensive college is, the diminishing population, and uh, the, the problems they have. I think if they're, 
uh, going to make a good pitch to the legislature. They have to do their due diligence. And uh, I think they're also drawing up support um, for the local community by raising our, our uh, uh, blood pressure. Um, hmm. And I'm not certain within the committee who wears it, the extent to which Jeb Spaulding, who had been in charge of the budget and the funding for a long period of time, and uh, if he's going to be a decision maker or if it's going to be people like uh, David Silverman or the, uh, or the first year or the first person in your family who ever attended college who's a representative from St. Albans, I think they clearly value this. They have, they have money problems and uh, I, I'm not certain where they're going or what they'll do to, to, to save the thing. And I'm not certain that, that they really are strongly interested in favoring closing the college location. So I thought, if you said it was intentional, I think it was an intentional setup of the question mm -hmm. for, for public support. Why, yeah, I, I don't know why it was intentional, but you don't, Jeb's smart enough guy to just throw something out there without knowing what he's doing and you know. that deferred maintenance of 22 million dollars though for johnson is really a sticker and, uh, linden is approximately 10 million 9 million and change for their deferred maintenance so if you look at a deferred maintenance standpoint that number was disputed at the that was disputed on one day well, I know at the meeting. No, at, at the meeting it was but disputed. The white, paper the white paper number on that was disputed, and they said that that's one of the things we're looking at again. So it might be more or less or whatever. But but uh, and Johnson had uh, a, a lot of people said, "Look, uh, you're not helping us. You're, you know, maybe you have, you know, from my point of view, they have to do this, but they're not helping us with with the NVU Johnson uh, Linden." Thing uh, and the project because we're we are doing what we are supposed to do. We met all the benchmarks, and you're undercutting us with this. So, mm -hmm. you know, give us time to do what we um, ought to do. I I would think that uh, besides municipal people and college staff and faculty that were there and, and students, that our local community people who who get money every month ought to be there talking about how important this is to, to them. You know? Nobody who gets a cent, gets a dollar from, from a college student was there saying anything. Like, well, it was also, uh, we didn't get really great notice on, on this meeting. I, I know several folks, like Greg and I talked about it, no. that couldn't make the meeting. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. The no, day before was... we were notified. <laughs> Yeah. I had, it was um, Kyle's notice, you know, yeah, which I, I had only the day before, but then didn't actually read it till that morning. And then I sent it well, out I had to you. Like so it was five minutes and there was no public. I might have ignored yeah. it except Margo called me. Oh uh, yeah. And then Margo was calling. Right. Right. Well, I think, uh, like. So I took notes on a couple other dates on the <laughs> calendar. Uh, they had a couple other dates that were to be determined. So I think we're going to, mm -hmm. uh, we Absolutely. certainly need to keep this on our radar. Absolutely. But the other, you know, the, the two big comments I had from the meeting was that we should all be able to refute that that deferred maintenance figure that uh, Johnson, uh, the representatives from Johnson at that meeting said that they had calculated, they believe that they calculated their numbers differently than the other campuses did. And that's why Johnson has a higher deferred maintenance cost. And they felt that the report publishing everybody's numbers when other people undercounted did Johnson a disservice. Right. Uh, that they, they, they maintain that Johnson is not higher. It's that Johnson calculated differently. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I don't remember exactly what Jeff Spaulding said to that, but he did seem to agree with them that he yeah. thinks that Johnson exactly. did calculate it differently. And they just don't know what to, but that Johnson it is not as different than the rest as it looks. Uh, and the other really positive thing from that meeting was they had to move the meeting to a much larger hall. 
That's true. Uh, I think that that really sent a good message that we turned people out. Uh, people Very short note, even at the last minute. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. But I think that the biggest takeaway for me was just that 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 we need to be we need to do more to be involved in, in to work with you know President Collins and the administration and say, listen, we are we're a stakeholder here. You've got to communicate with us and not just at the last minute like this, because that's you know really interested. So I think we need to do, we need to take it on ourselves to do more to uh, have a closer relationship there. I don't have a specific suggestion, but it would be a terrible loss for our community. You know, years ago, we used to have a uh, student liaison who would regularly attend board meetings. And I'm not saying the student maybe is the right one, but um, some open communication channels between the town and the college really should be established more regularly. Did Bill Doyle used to do that? Do you have something to do with that? I think we should go. No. I mean, Kyle, you, Kyle does a pretty good job of, you know, uh, yeah. working with uh, yeah. President Collins. But yeah. I think I mean, we need to do more. But it is kind of more recently, like, it's interesting, like it's, you know, I've reached out to her a lot in the past, but it's only now recently that she's actually giving me the time, the time oh, to really? meet with her. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I've had a couple of really good meetings with her about developing a stronger creative economy in our town and um, not working in isolation from each other. And um, and um, the VSC has been a part of that conversation. And so, um and she's very, very interested in starting a co-worker space in the village of Johnson, like Linden's campus has. Mm -hmm. They have an off-site co-working space that's been wildly successful. Um, so we're, yeah, so we're getting the ball moving with that. Um, um, Greg, I think you and she, and I, I think I'm going to be at that meeting too, and Brian have one coming up at the end of September, again, to talk about... Um, and when I actually just got, well, I don't know if it's getting rescheduled or not. Oh, but, really? Uh, okay. Uh, the representative from USDA was going to attend, and he can't attend that day. Okay. So he got rescheduled. I don't know if we okay. want to reschedule the whole meeting or not. Uh, okay. I got that so, this afternoon on the phone. Okay. So anyway, connections are starting to finally be made, hopefully not too little too late here. Um, but she's, yeah, I think she's, really seeing that now that now that the consolidation's been underway for you know a year or more I think she's now starting to open expand her uh her discussion so oh, I see. would yeah. we ask to have you be a liaison to them or would we ask them to have a, a be a liaison with us how do we how do we could mm -hmm. is there a way is formalizing something useful is it informal fine uh, what would be what would be the best way of you know we'd like to i'd like to be able to support them you know, mm -hmm. and, yeah uh, mm -hmm. yeah that's a good question um you know m sort of my in was more through johnson works and and our downtown businesses and you know the sort of mm -hmm. economic development stuff um which of course affects all of us and benefits all of us um but yeah, I, and we have, you know, we have NVU folks that sit on our Johnson Works board, which is really helpful because it's often so hard to figure out who to call up there, who to communicate with. So um, I think, yeah, I think anytime we're around each other's tables is really, really beneficial. Maybe if you have a meeting with them, you could ask them how, yeah. how what we can do or what they mm -hmm. can do, you know, because mm -hmm. there, there is, you know, faculty people were thanking me for showing up. You right. Know? And, and yeah. I would assume that, that, and I assume that went for everybody mm -hmm. that was there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, finally we have something where we're all in it together. Right. Before we are just drove right. our own ships. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I can. Okay. Prove into that's that something more. we should. 
keep yes. them in front of yes, our yes, mind. Yes, yes. Uh, the inclusivity sign. Yeah, so it's currently um, on the Legion field, but winter is coming. Um, and uh, the idea of it being housed in the foyer of our building here um, has been kicked around, um, which I personally think is a great place for it if we can figure out the spacing of it. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> um, Throw out the cow. Yeah, that we could. Rehome, although I guess it doesn't fit through the door. Yeah, I don't need to fit through the door anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't? Or the sign? No, the sign might be a problem too. But I was the only no, one who voted against that cow. Maybe if we take it off the base. I voted for it. I thought it had nice colors. But I was thinking <laughs> while we're talking yeah. about redecorating the four year area and getting yeah, it repainted, now that the construction's done, repainted, that we could just have that work around the sign, like make it part of the plan. Um. <coughs> Sounds good. If you're going to do you have the something. exact measurements of the sign? Uh, three by nine. Is it just like four a- Four by eight. Isn't that a four by eight sheet of Four plywood? by eight, I think it's four by eight. Okay. Sheet of plywood, she goes through the door. And it's uh, vertical. It's vertical. Yeah. yeah, so it's long and narrow. So we can measure a couple of walls on there and see what it, if it fits any place. Yeah, I mean, it could even have something built on the back to freestand in a corner. It doesn't necessarily have to be mounted to a wall. Like Is this that. just leaning against the brick oven right now? Which is okay, but you know, we should think of a more long-term plan on the on the field too. Um, that's actually a good thing to bring up with the joint meeting. The joint meeting. Is, oh yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> Especially if we're going to put it someplace where space is limited, we should really. Yep. Yeah. Right Trustees now. might be sort of partial to that cow. We had it all in the belt and charge them, right? <laughs> They'd want a pretty penny for it. Okay, oh. so we'll add that to the agenda. Yep. Okay. You also had, you want to add that to the joint, yep. right? Uh, response to emails. Yeah, so a couple of citizens have uh, voiced concern about not getting responses to emails when they send them to the select board. Like either no response or super delayed response or uh, so I'm Any it's particular thing or uh, issue or person or yeah, opinion. well this I have heard grumblings about it in the past too, but the the more the one that was brought to my attention just this week or last week was um, I guess Cal sent an email about the the Zuckerman event mm -hmm. that was happening to all of us and didn't get a word back from anybody, not even a no, a nothing, right. <laughs> and that's just frustrating. Um, so that's one example of that happening. Um, I did just, see his email, but right. I was on vacation. Okay. Yeah, so I guess it's more just like, let's just be aware that when, you know, a taxpayer <laughs> emails us that we're, you know, that we're mindful about getting There was back nothing to in the notice that, you know, please respond one way or another. I, I thought it was just- I think it, no, it was a- for yeah, action. You did. And we- <laughs> He was having, he couldn't post something on yeah, uh, yeah. It, something, but one of our social medias, but it was like. He deserved a response for yeah. us to say, you know, we, yeah. we you know, that, that we, we can or can't do what he's asking. Yeah. And we, yeah. It, it's sure we didn't give him one. Uh, yeah, I, I remember seeing that one it came in right at the same time we were doing the social media policy. And so it really seemed easy to say, let's finish doing this social media policy thing and then address Cal. And yeah, I, I didn't, uh, I guess nobody did. Uh, and I had a, a phone message that I didn't get to until I got back. But I think oh, you did. called me as well. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I think, you know, one of, I, I feel anyway, 
as a public official, if somebody contacts me, that I should contact them back. So just more mindful. Yeah. It's something I know I personally have. It, it's hard sometimes to send people an email that says, I'll get back to you. But right. it makes a big difference when you just send them under I saw your email. I don't have an answer to you today. I'll yeah, get back people to you. just want to feel heard and seen. And yeah, that's uh, pretty basic. Yeah. I hate sending those emails, but they make a difference. Yes. Okay, we got anything else? Not stand adjourned.